Hey, welcome back to Match Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we have another deck dive in the startup format. This is called the Clam and Tanker. And this is an AWB rig shooter, a bit of a combo deck that has some really fun interactions that some runners might not see coming and it's gonna cost them their programs. Now, the basic idea behind this deck uh, stemmed from a write-up that Dark Ray posted in December, just upon the release of Parhelion, talking about the Stavka half-run combo. If you've never seen this interaction before, it's a bit tricky and a bit surprising. So firstly, for this to work, we have to be playing Op, my favorite Wayland Identity, which says that once per turn, when we trash an installed card, we can search our deck for a card that costs exactly one less than that card and get that thing rezzed and installed for free, or at least not paying credit costs. And this is really interesting because it means we can start producing things at instant speed if we have abilities that are trashing our cards at instant speed. So we have Stavka. And Stavka on its own is a really mean ice that you need to respect when playing against Wayland because this thing can trash two programs. It's worth knowing, as we talked about last week, program recursion is kind of at a premium in uh, the startup format. Trashing programs is a very direct win condition because not every faction, in fact, almost no faction is playing ways to get their programs back on the table. Now, Stavka is only two strength. But if you'd like, when you res Stavka, you're given the ability to trash another installed card. It could be any card, it doesn't have to be res to give uh, Stavka seven strength. Seven strength on its own is a lot, and that actually can make this fire somewhat consistently. You're spending a lot of money to break this, but more importantly, it allows you to trash a card, which means if you trash a res three cost card at instant speed, you can go get a half run and you can res it and install it for free. And Half Run is a strange Jinteki Ice that also just recently came out. I'm not a big fan of Half Run. When it came out, it seemed kind of uninteresting. But its ability to be pulled at instant speed is quite fascinating. Because it says, when you res Half Run, as long as you trash a card from your hand, you can choose an installed uh, card that the runner has, and that card, for the rest of this run, cannot break subroutines anymore. Which means, because you installed this on the server where the Stavka is, because you trashed a three-coster, the runner is now running into a Stavka, and with the half run res, you can say, hey, your killer, sorry, you can't use it to break subroutines, which means at instant speed, this half run that showed up from nowhere is blanking their killer, and they're just encountering the Stavka now, and if they don't have another way, another killer or some external way to break the Stavka, it's going to fire, and they're going to lose two programs. So it doesn't matter how much money they have. It doesn't matter if they do or do not have their killer. If they have two, it technically does get around this. The Stavka will fire. And uh, as accor according to Darkrai, ban this now. I'm not exactly sure we're at that point yet, but this is a very powerful combo that a lot of people might not see coming, at least their first op match where they haven't seen this. And it, it's fairly difficult. You might have seen last week I was getting a bit frustrated about this because inherently our deck didn't have any ways to deal with this. And you're seeing this in more often than not in most op lists. And that's kind of where we are, the tanker and the clam, half run being the clam. But we have a slightly different twist to this to add actually a fair bit of consistency to this unfairness that half run can potentially uh, produce. And that is Mavirus. Mavirus showed up as a one of in Dark Ray's list, talking about how you can use the Mavirus at instant speed at basically any paid ability window. You can trash the Mavirus to purge all virus counters. Worth noting, you can use this even if there are no virus counters on the table. And then, of course, because you trash a three coster, you can get a two coster at instant speed which means with three of these in this list, we have a lot of opportunities at instant speed to produce a half run when the runner is encountering any ice we have on the table whatsoever. We do not have to rely on Stavka being res right when the runner is encountering it, and we have another three coster to trash. Any ice, even if it's already been resed, we can produce a half run and stop a runner dead in their tracks. So that's what we did, and we're swinging into this in a couple ways. We have more program destruction. We're on two copies of Rotator which means that if this has just been rezzed or has already been rezzed on the table, the runner's running into this with their killer, we just res them a virus from any server, which is super important, trash them a virus, go get a two coster, get the half run on that same server, trash a card from hand, and that roto turret is firing. And again, if they don't have another way to deal with the roto turret besides the card we just blank, that's gonna fire, and that gives you a lot of teeth, a lot of flexibility. It's no longer just Stavka, any ice. That's actually really important because any ice is very flexible. The fact that we have three Mavirus and three Half Run means the runner can be running into Enigma in the mid to late game and we can just say, sorry, you're not breaking that Enigma, your decoder is blank for this run, lose a click, end the run, and now they also have to come back if they're running the remote server, let alone we might have just stopped a run event dead in its tracks. They have to come back through two pieces of ice suddenly. And this interaction has been really fun and really powerful and the basis behind this deck. Flexibility of the Stavka combo, but also the viruses and the three half run, we can pull at instant speed to stop anybody going anywhere as long as you know we can produce those cards. So let's go through the list really quickly. We'll explain the decisions and we'll start here with the ice. We're on five barriers and we're on ice wall. 
Uh, we have three of these, and this is just something that's cheap that ends the run, which is kind of what we want to do. If we can end up trashing all copies of the fractors that the runner has, this is the best ice that we could possibly produce for the cost. Now, one cost is actually really important. Whenever you're building an op deck, you need to care about what kind of cards you have at each cost because you want to be able to trash your two costers to find your one costers, your one costers to find your zero costers. You just want to make sure you have that nice sort of sequence that makes sense for your deck. And ice walls, the three of our, our one costers, and we actually can produce them pretty consistently. At some point later in the game, the half runs on the table. Maybe they're not taxing enough. Maybe we can get rid of these to go get our ice walls. But the most common interaction is that we have three regolith mining license. This is our two cost asset that we can click to get money off of it. And when this finishes, uh, it trashes itself, which means as long as we haven't fired our op ability, we can go get an ice wall and install it free uh, and get it on the table and res it. And that's actually really quite good. Be able to get more value from an already really good card in startup it means that we can push ourselves further forward and then have more stuff on the table that we can use for some of our other interactions. We'll talk about that. It's mostly Zato City Grid. We're on a single Mascarovka, and honestly, I'm not sure if we should be on this card. Uh, this card actually looks kind of nice compared to Ice Wall, but if somebody face checks into Mascarovka in the early game and the subroutine's fired, you basically do get just a barrier that costs you one credit, albeit with two subroutines. Now, from that point forward, if runners are on Cleaver, and I do think it's only a bit worse if they're on something like uh, Tremolo, this is broken usually for just about the same cost as the Ice Wall. And so I feel like you could just probably play something else in this slot because this is not that interesting of a card, unfortunately. I originally had more Maskarovkas in the list because I wanted more three cost cards just to ensure that we could do the Ansel half run thing without relying on a virus. And uh, it turns out we're actually pretty consistent at that anyways. So getting going out of your way to play more three costers is probably not worth doing. You can play basically anything. Probably another code gate actually in the slot. A late addition too, we're on Pharos, um, just to make sure, because in some games we're not actually that capable of doing some rig destruction. So just having a big piece of ice to put on your R&D so you don't lose or on your scoring remote server so you have something taxing is actually pretty good. And while Pharos is relatively expensive, it is a high strength barrier and that's something that's actually really good in startup format. A lot of the barriers you're seeing are things like Cleaver and they don't scale to height really well. So just having one ice that's good enough uh, to be taxing is maybe worth doing it. Again, as long as you can afford it. And so far it's been okay. Code Gates next. This is really interesting. We're on two copies of Anvil, and I was actually really impressed playing against Anvil a couple weeks ago when we were doing some other runner stuff and startup. And Anvil is a really interesting card. It's actually one of the best or one of the worst face checks for runners on central servers on turn one. A lot of times runners will install something. Uh, I don't know. A lot of times you see red team, maybe a penny shaver, and then you smash central servers and this will just destroy it. You're generally resing this for three credits on the turn uh, that it's res. You get the credit back. There's a bit of a credit swing and then the runner starts having to trash their board. Now, the weird thing about Anvil is that if you are trashing your own board, which is not a big cost and op, sometimes that gives you the flexibility to find the pieces that you need to trash a four cost or to go get your Zato City Grid, your Mavirus. There's a lot of options there. Uh, runners know that they don't actually need a breaker to get through this because you always have the option to make it unbreakable. And unbreakable is very potent. The runner cannot afford to trash things consistently going over this over and over again as much as you also can't uh, kind of fuel the forge, uh, fuel the Anvil every turn. It means that it's not something that actually requires a breaker. and this deck actually likes having more things that require breakers to go through because inherently we're attacking the breakers. So I think there's a big chance that you could drop the anvils and maybe try playing Hordum, a four cost, four strength code gate that does end the run, let alone gives you some more teeth against AIs if you need to get to that. Uh, and I think that might work with the deck a bit better, considering though, anvil is a really cool and fun card. We have two Enigma. And this card's actually like way better than you might it might look. I've always been a fan of Enigma. It's nice to have those three costers in there. But the big thing is that this has an actually pretty relevant face check. I have, and I will continue to, Mavirus half run people into Enigma. They run into it, they lose a click, they end the run, and they have to come back. We just built our own border control that also robs a click. It's a bit convoluted, admittedly. It's a bit harder to play than one of the best ice in the standard format. But the idea is that the face check on this is actually really relevant, and sometimes half running an Enigma is the right thing to do. We haven't talked about Zato City Grid yet, but this is a really important card to know when also talking about the ice. Maybe we should have talked about this before. But Zato City Grid lets us trash our ice on a remote server only to fire a subroutine on that piece of ice. Now this means, and this is a big reason why having three ice walls is actually something that scales relatively well into the mid to late game when we're basically just generating these uh, immediate end the runs that the runner can't interact with. That's actually a really cool thing about the sort of Enigma half run idea. Say on a remote server, you have a Mavirus, a Zato City Grid, and something like Enigma. The runner runs into the Enigma, you pull the half run with the Mavirus at instant speed, they lose a click, end the run, and now they have to go back with only two clicks left. And you have a Zato City Grid and now two ice on the remote server that end the run. So suddenly we can throw the half run at them, which is not a very taxing ice, and then the Enigma you can also throw at them. 
That's really cool. It actually makes the remote server almost impossible to run, albeit there are tricks around most of this stuff. Of course there are, uh, but it's a very nice piece of ice. And the face check on this is actually quite relevant. I'm a big fan of Enigma in this list. Of course, we're on a three half run. It's worth knowing that this thing is a two coster that you can make into ice walls at some point, but this is a code gate and a barrier, which is a bit tricky. Again, we're attacking programs or destroying programs, but if the runner has a way to get through this, they will get to this. Again, the fact that this is an end the run that you can generate at instant speed, let alone you can blank breakers, obviously makes this really important and it works really well with Zato City Grid. In terms of the sentries, nothing we haven't said before. We're on three Stavka and two Roto Turrets as ways to trash programs, either super unfairly with Half Run or even more unfairly in some ways with Zato City Grid, and that's quite powerful. It works really well with the Half Run. It's worth noting that there's other cards that you could kind of play in these slots. I think Archer is the big sentry in Wayland that people are scared of. You have to forfeit an agenda for this, which is actually kind of difficult. We're running some hostile takeovers, the 2-1 agenda, but we're not running all three of them. So if you lose an agenda, it actually does greatly increase the time of the game. But also you have access to Ballista, and I think Ballista is very comparable to Roto Turret. Ballista doesn't give you a choice whether you want to trash programs or end the run. Rotator does both, which is actually super, super valuable when you have this on your remote server. Uh, but I think you could consider playing Ballista. It is a bit more expensive. It is more expensive to break two generally for the runner. But if you want to save two influence on the Rotator, you could probably try this. I just very much value uh, the one influence of pop isn't a lot to ask for. We talked about the upgrades, my virus super important at instant speed, let alone the purchase viruses too, that's valuable. And then the Zato City grids to get the remote server really locked down. Throw the end the runs, throw the trash programs. A lot of runners will see all this stuff and then try and win off central servers. And it's up to you to make sure you can protect that. But of course, with the flexibility of my virus half run, we can make the half run show up on any server. Operations, just some economy. Three extract is really powerful in op. It gives you that flexibility on its own. You can play it for three credits, but ideally you're playing it for six while also getting something from your deck while trashing something and pushing yourself forward. Very powerful ability. We have three hedge fund as a basis of economy and we have two government subsidy. This was something that was added into the list throughout testing. And I found out being at that 10 credit threshold wasn't the most difficult, especially with the big burst of things like extract or you know trying to jam your way through a regolith. So the five credit economy card here, you're gonna have to play around it a bit, maybe some turns if you're on eight or nine, you might not wanna res ice for a turn, but a very big economy card. And then finally, we're on a single copy of Sprint. This is a flexible influence slot. You can do really most anything with this. I valued Sprint. A big part of the op decks is you want to make sure that certain cards that you want to produce at instant speed, things like half run, are in R&D as opposed to in your hand where they're actually quite bad. Now with three half run, you're not running into the problem that often where you're in a really, really bad spot, but sprint is flexible. It breaks R&D lock as much as op can do that pretty consistently. I think one slot that was testing for one influence turned out to be magnet. Magnet's a very interesting tech card that lets you blank things like botulus and uh, not so much hush, but you are seeing stuff that are being installed, Trojan stuff that are being installed on ice. And I found out that Magnet definitely feels okay, but with three Mavirus, it felt a bit, um, maybe unnecessary. I actually liked it a lot more often where runners were confident that they had a functional functioning botulist while they ran into some really nasty ice. And then you surprised them with the second Mavirus as opposed to the Magnet. So do as you will. I think that's an influence slot. You can definitely try some stuff with. Sprint is never bad. Assets, we have three regolith. We talked about the, how this card is so good. It's good enough economy. We can produce it at instant speed with the Maviruses, which is actually a very nice thing that makes the Mavirus even more flexible in the list. And then on top of it, when this thing goes, either when it's finished or when you extract it, you can get a nice wall, which is not bad at all. On top of that, we have three Spin Doctors, which is really good. It's worth noting at instant speed with Zato City Grid or even with a Stavka, you can trash things like your ice walls to go get Spin Doctors at instant speed while the runner is running the remote server that has an agenda in it. You can overinstall the agenda, get into archives, save it with Spin Doctor. It's a really cool panic button that allows you the freedom to take a couple more aggressive lines. Obviously, Spin Doctor is really great. Now, the agenda suite is interesting. I'm not 100% sold on it. I've done a fair bit of testing, and this is where we ended up. We have two hostile takeover. The 2-1 agenda on its own, giving bad publicity, feels actually really bad. Uh, a lot of our ice is low strength, and I think that's something we could address with things like Horda, maybe Ballista, which means that the fixed strength and our breaker suite goes through most of our ice for pennies. Now, ideally, we're trashing their icebreakers, so that's not a problem that lasts for too long. But the bad pub early versus the bad pub late, you can huge, see a huge difference in the games where that happens. Now, the really important thing about Hostile Takeover, it's an agenda that you can score from hand. So ideally, you're scoring three of the two point agendas, and this is your final point. So I probably want to keep some amount of them. I don't think we're confident enough to play three of them. Maybe at that point, you can consider Archer, but Hostile Takeover is definitely good. But I actually had some reservations about this card. Next, we're on a singleton above the law. It's a three two agenda. You can't ask for better with a really relevant ability. Only one of per deck will definitely gonna play it. And then we have our other two point agendas. And these slots are actually kind of interesting. They change throughout testing. 
We're on two copies of Kimberly Field. This is a 4-2 agenda, the new agenda that is actually really unfair as well if you're expecting to keep your programs around. It's another angle for us to attack the runner. Now this can trash anything. It doesn't always have to be programs. You can trash hardware, of course, resources as well. And this is actually an interesting card because it does more of what our deck was already doing. And for a while, I actually cut more Kimberly Fields out of the deck. And then I found myself in situations where our Stavka half run wasn't working so well because of things like endurance. And we have to talk about endurance. We will in a second. So having this as an alternate angle of an attack to shut down problematic breakers or multi-axis was actually very, very valuable. So I like this 4-2. We have two right now in the deck. You can consider playing three. Just make sure that you have enough economy in the list because generally most of the other agendas that this is competing with are economy agendas. And speaking of economy agendas, we have three Oaktown renovation. This is a 4-2 that, while it is installed face up, which is obviously a big deal, you advance this to give yourself money, and then you can continue to advance it to give yourself even more money. This slot is really, really comparable to Offworld Office, which is very easily played. This gives you seven credits, but only if you score it. Mind you, uh, Oaktown renovation will give you credits, even if you lose the agenda at some point. Um, and it's kind of up to you to figure out which one you prefer playing. I like Oaktown Renovation. I've been playing Oaktown Renovation for a really long time. This is an older Netrunner card, and I just like it a fair bit more because I like the flavor. Uh, but you could play whatever you want. I think they're very comparable. Testing will tell. And then finally, we're on three Project Atlas. It's a 3-2 agenda. And you can drop one of the Atlases to play another thing like a Kimberlite Field, but I actually value just having a 3-2 agenda or more 3-2 agendas in the list because we are inherently playing a fair bit of upgrades. And installing and never advancing, just installing a card in a remote server looks like a Mavirus, it looks like a Zato, and runners are much less likely to run it, as opposed to a card that you do install advance, let alone install advance face up with things like uh, Oaktown Renovation. The Atlas, if you can over advance it, if you can do the install advance safely, I would recommend it. And it's not so much because we can pull the right piece at the right time. We're not a combo deck like the Start of Modernism deck we did a deck dive a couple of weeks ago on. It's more so that at instant speed, we can find that hostile takeover to get us to the seventh point. That's actually the best use generally of this. Sometimes pulling a Mavirus is okay, just getting that combo piece to set up the half run combo, but we're actually pretty consistent with that. There's not a lot of one ofs that are for situational board states in this deck. And that is this deck. And this deck has been a lot of fun. You get a lot of interesting combo interaction. You can surprise a lot of runners. There's a lot of runners who haven't seen these interactions, let alone the flexibility of the Mavirus half run interaction on any ice. But there are some problems you're going to run into. Firstly, I kind of feel mean about this because one of the best metas for this deck, and that's the really big thing, is understanding the field you're playing this deck into is kind of cards like Matryoshka. Uh, the deck list of the week a couple weeks ago, and we did a deck dive on a video that was Matryoshka based. Um, these sort of decks that have a very fragile uh, breaker suite, they only have one way that they can deal with ice, things like the three or four stacked Matryoshka, they're obviously really weak to rig destruction. And I saw this firsthand when I was playing the Matryoshka lists as of uh, last week doing the deck dive video, and I ran into some matchups where I felt like our win rate was just inherently really low because we were all our eggs were in a single basket. And that's true. And I kind of feel a bit mean playing this sort of archetype when a lot of people are trying out new Matryoshka lists. Uh, there's some really cool stuff up on, on Never DB. But the bigger issue with this deck is how to deal with the stuff that is kind of running in the opposite direction. And there is a lot of it. This is Endurance, and you've probably seen Endurance a fair bit. It's worth knowing just two days ago, Endurance has now been banned in the standard format. While it's still legal in the startup format and Null Signal Games is looking into this, I do think that this card probably should be in just about every deck, unfortunately. Uh, we played about a dozen games, and I think Endurance was in more than half of it, and it was kind of regardless of what archetype or what faction we were playing into. You were seeing Endurance just about everywhere. And Endurance is a really strong card, but you might see why Endurance is really bad for this sort of deck. The idea with our deck with Half Run is we can blank one card, so that card cannot break subroutines for this single run. But if a runner ever has Endurance and an actual Icebreaker, we can only choose one of those to break, which means it's very hard for us to manufacture situations in which they're kind of out of luck and the subroutines are going to fire. If we blank the Endurance, they'll use the Breaker. If they blank the Breaker, they'll use the Endurance. Now, our win rate against Endurance decks is kind of, its I wouldn't say night and day, but it's a lot worse than if they're not on Endurance. That's where we can do our unfair things and get these kind of confirmed combos. With Endurance, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Now, we do have some ice, and if you do end up trashing the right type of breaker, Endurance gets stretched a fair bit thinner. The fact that you have to use Endurance to break every single barrier as opposed to whenever it's convenient for you is kind of a difference, but this is really hard to deal with and you're seeing an endurance everywhere. And I think you're just going to see more and more endurance specifically on the competitive scene because it does seem like the best thing you can do in the console slot in almost every single faction. I did say last week that endurance is feeling a bit more fair in startup than standard. And I think that one of the big differences is this deck doesn't have the slots to have another angle of attack. Like we're playing a rig shooter deck and complaining about endurance. Like that's kind of on us. So you might want to go out of the way to kind of, you know, 
level the playing field or just kind of iron out the worst endurance matchup. It's kind of difficult to attack some of the ways that you want to attack endurance that other decks can do. It's hard to find the slots for things like retribution and then you'll need to play ping or public trail, but you can maybe look into it. And ideally too, if you're not playing endurance, there are other ways that you can deal with the Stavka type half run type combo. We were running into some Banhar decks and they're actually really cool and they force interaction in a different way because if the subroutines fire, they're just net damage. That's kind of cool. And we also saw things like backstitching, hitting central servers and making central server runs a bit safe. And so I think there's other ways you can deal with these sort of combos uh, besides installing extra breakers or just kind of sailing the sea. And just so you see, uh, there are some other versions of this deck that we were playing. I think the first game coming up was playing this version, uh, which was only on two half run, a single Mavirus. This is before I really swung into it. Here we do have Mana Garm, so we have some other flexibility of things we can pull at instant speed. And this is a very fun version as well. And then eventually we also tried, you know, we're at three half run, three Mavirus, but we're playing a single Ancel. Because Ancel 1.0 is one of the few ice in the whole format that can actually trash an Endurance. It says trash one installed runner card. That could be anything and it's the corpse choice. However, unfortunately, if you ever half run a breaker into an on cell, uh, the runner can just click through the subroutines because the text is on the on cell. So you have to manufacture a bit more of a tricky situation. Maybe you're Zatoing, so they have to keep running back and losing clicks. But this is not that consistent. But this is one of the few ways you can use Zato and half run to actually directly attack um, the boat. And that's this list again. Maybe it's on us. Maybe the fact that we're playing a deck that's really unfair against anything that's not running endurance is going to just encourage more endurance. So. Whoops, but besides that, this deck is actually really fun and you got a lot of cool tricks. You're attacking in strange ways and you end up planning your turns a couple turns in the future. You're setting these traps and you're waiting for them to spring. And I really enjoy doing that when playing all my cards face down as a corporation. Hopefully you enjoy the games. We have a whole bunch coming up. And of course, if you're enjoying the series, you like this content, liking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel does a lot to help this channel grow. It's greatly appreciated. And with all that, enjoy the games. All right, we're back in startup. We're playing against Quetzal. Thank you, you too. This is a different version of the Clam and Tanker. We're swinging into three Maviris because it's like the most unfair way you can pull half run at instant speed, let alone a Tutors for Regolith, which is nice. This is our second game we played against Quetzal, and I know there's the, the virus, or sorry, the Poison Vial Quetzal list that was published, but I think uh, people are just enjoying some Quetzal right now. I do think a lot of times this deck um, probably should have an Endurance in it, and Endurance is like definitely one of the weaknesses. We actually struggle to deal with Endurance. We used to have an out with, um, on cell 1.0, but we cut that. So unfortunately for us, it's just to try and tax it out while trashing the other breakers. And it's doable. This opening hand is like not amazingly proactive. Uh, we have a Mavirus and Yaakov and then two ice. I think we can do better than this. Just some economies are pretty rare, but the Mavirus can at instant speed, you pay an extra credit to get the regolith out of your deck, which is not the worst. Otherwise here we would ice up HQ, our ice up our R and D probably. Massacre of the remote server is not amazing. They're gonna run it once a turn. We'll mulligan this. All right, that's uh, you know, interesting. It's hard to protect the ice wall, um, but at least they can only run it through it once. And it's also awkward now that the ice wall are single end to run uh, barrier is not the best against Quetzal. So let's see what we're doing here. We need to get the regolith off. I do think we want to ice up centrals. Uh, we can maybe leave HQ a bit open here. Again, the ice wall attacks once per turn. Like if we get this res, we'll just extract this for a spin doctor at some point. And it's also something we can feed the anvil. So we're hoping to get like a magnet or an enigma, something that ends the run and put a Stavka in front of it. I think we used to, we cut Hordems from this list, which is probably a mistake. It's just so good against the buzzsaw package. And currently all our code gates are three strength or lower. We should probably address that. So we'll put that on R&D, just on HQ. And we'll just play this one in three. or end a good trashable in HQ. So HQ pressure on turn one can be relevant. I don't think if you install and if you don't install any cards, you can just kind of face check. Like as soon as you install one card, the face check of Anvil's Brit rough. We have to res this. Unfortunately, that's a free run a turn. And then getting up the uh, stop card really doesn't matter. Fire and broken. They're not going in. Uh, they can cut all that if they want. Maybe they have better plans here, like a jailbreaker, dirty laundry. Yeah, there you go. So that's going to flush HQ. That's actually disastrous for us. But we have to res this here. So cuts all goes through. Regolith got to trash that so much money. Again, maybe they can't recover from that. And then Atlas, those are the two best hits by a mile. They don't see we have a Stavka. That's a great start. They got a card draw off of the Jailbreak as well. This could be a Maskarovka. We would have got, you know, we still just would have paid one credit. So not really a big difference on the face check there. That is ugly. Let's draw up. Ooh. So this, what does Hafren say? Hafren says installed. Hafren blank blanks installed runner card. So you actually can't blank Quetzal, which is unfortunate. Uh, uh, Quetzal also doesn't say interface, which is really funny, but I, I don't think that's actually relevant. So drop once again. Uh, thanks. I hate it. I think we're just going to ice HQ. Next turn we can score out the hostile, but obviously this is not something we really want to res here. 
Earthrise coming down, putting them to zero credits. That's actually really difficult now to play the rest of the turn. Um, and if they face check into an anvil, that's really quite bad. Ooh, double hostile. Um, scoring two hostiles doesn't honestly allow us to win. Uh, it doesn't get us to like seven points. It gets us to obviously one point, then to two points. But because we only have even number agendas, it doesn't change much. This is a potentially disastrous face check. We don't really have to trash another card. We can choose to trash the ice wall to go get a zero cost. It would be a spin doctor. I honestly think that might be worth it. At that point, we'd have a stuff on the innermost. I don't think we're going to do it as much as a spin doctor would be actually really good here. I just like the fact that we could get two barriers on our HQ. So we're not going to trash a card and this will just fire. So they paid four credits and a card for two card draw credit swing. And they have to trash one of their cards. So this is the one face check card that installing anything is a bit risky too. off world off the top, though. That's a good trade. They're halfway there again. If they steal this hostile, it actually matters more for them. Uh, because it puts them on game point for us it doesn't do much and too bad publicity might be a lot Dawkins pass okay i'm actually terrified this looks like it's a poison vial list with asmund pula so second ice wall and hq is all we want here's where i don't like the stavka but we kind of did flood up so there's a spin doctor that's going to save us so we can install this reset and then just ice up hq once again depending on what we draw into i don't think we really need to protect this we got all the ice walls that's a bit unfortunate those are all the one costers in our deck so uh, we have no good uh thing to fire after we get a regular through but I think we need to put this on HQ and we need to get C poison vials. Luckily, this stuff stacks against poison vial. Poison vial honestly doesn't have really good targets against us besides the Maskarovka. Uh, we probably could have trashed the Stavka here. Earthrise, they have no economy. Here we got to push for a remote server. Um, we can score out again the hostile. I think we want to build a remote server. And as much as we can, we can get them a virus down and crack that at instant speed um, to go get a regolith. We can also get a half run, but half run is technically a barrier, so Kitzal deals with it. I think we drop one seer before we build a server. Okay, that's ugly. We have to consider pushing into remote now. Cleaver gets through this. This on the innermost is not amazing. We have only uh, two and three halves of barriers left in the deck. So getting this on the innermost is like, okay. But yeah, we can die to a single run. If they just have like, I don't know, install a cleaver is kind of hard again. They haven't played a lot of economy and they're underneath six credits, which is like the big break point. I'm probably clicking up for gamble. Oh, oh yeah, it's a Matryoshka deck, right? That's a huge liability if we half run like Stavka their stuff, let alone obviously they don't have credits. Second spin doctor honestly might be worth just to draw through our deck aggressively. So we're going to shuffle these. And then we're going to do that. I think actually the other hedge fund would have been fine because we get less value from the regolith considering all our one costers are accounted for. So I think we can do new remote draw up. I don't really need to protect this. Enigma is perfect. That is an end the run. So we'll put that on server two. And I think putting the Zato there is like, okay. Uh, getting this in server two is also really interesting because it means at instant speed, we can always pull a virus from our list or sorry, pull a half run from our list so we can trash basically the Matryoshka on, on will. That's quite nice. Again, they're just not threatening anything because they don't have credits. They're clicking for credits every time a scrubber coming down again. That's not economy that allows them to actually play any cards from their hand as much as it contests the spin doctor, but, um, they're definitely going to want a bit more economy than that. All right. So we have ice wall enigma. I think we can do Zato install advance. It's really safe. Not that the Zato does too much, but allows us to end the run with the ice wall. This is, yeah, it's a break. It doesn't prevent it from like happening. Cool. So HQ, just the double ice wall will do it. Again, Matryoshka can deal with it, but if this is like the big question, they need another Matryoshka, then they need credits to run. And if they, it depends on their ordering here. Oh, Marrow, cool. So we have to trash cards from HQ. That should be fine. But the core damage hits a liberated account. So that's like the big economy card that you want to stay about five to six credits because they're just bricks in your hand. And it's the most economy on a single card in the faction. So you want to play around that. Just draw, draw. No money, but they do have seven hand size. And we're going to be able to score this thing out. We have a Yaakov. That'd be nice. We're on 14. We have to trash one card. That's fine. With a spin doctor on the table, it actually allows us to like address our hand. Like we could throw out the hostile takeover if we really wanted to. We might need another ice on R&D here. We are holding a lot of agendas, so I'm not that worried about R&D pressure. I'm not sure. I think the deck probably is on finality, which we can just lose a single finality for sure. And I think it makes sense if they're adding hand size while they're on finality. Good thing is no endurance. It's obviously the good thing. So getting a road to turret on R&D would be really dirty here. Extract. I want to keep this on the table. Um, we could extract the spin doctor just for six credits. It might be good enough. We want to probably do install advance here. We can also put the Yakov in the remote server. I think that's all quite good. Uh, this does give you economy. They could be on pinhole, but like it's hard to figure out which target here is the good target. And with only three credits, um, I don't think they can contest the remote server. While they can get through the ice wall, we can just Zato edit them. And then we'll have an Enigma and then probably a half run at some point. The cool thing too is like Enigma's face check is somewhat pseudo relevant. 
like, oh, there's the Liberty Counts. Like if they run this, we res the Enigma, we get a half run, and then they have to face check into Enigma because we blanked the Matryoshka. And at that point, um, they've lost clicks, which is like fine. Atlas with a counter, we have to destroy something here. Um, I'm not sure we're excited about a second anvil. Maybe that's a good reason to install something like a scrubber, but at that point in the game, I think they just needed credits so they could, you know, hit the liberated accounts. Uh, here is draw cards or gain credits. Honestly, their economy has been pretty rough. Admittedly, they have access to liberated, but card draw means they can get into like a finality. Second nights on R&D would be good, but even if they run into this, we could technically pull out a half run. At that point, they just can't break it, which doesn't really matter for the uh, finality, but we definitely want a Roto Turret or a Stavka on R&D. Uh, not that the anvil ends the run. I wonder if we are on too many anvils, actually, considering we're targeting programs. Uh, this is a cool card, though, and it's fun. So here we just need to get into another agenda. We could just always rip it with the Atlas. We could rip uh, Oaktown install advance, and then they really need to do something about the remote server. I think we'd, to be really safe, we want a third piece of ice there, just because the, an ice wall doesn't do that much. Uh, the Enigma, they can get through. That's a hush. Turns off the text. Oh, it's a jailbreak. Okay, so this is actually really interesting. So they've turned off the text of Anvil. So it's just going to be these subroutines, which they could choose to break if they want to for uh, uh, two to three credits, right? That being said, we can always res Yaakov, fire them a virus, go get it a thing, uh, go get a half run, blank the text on the Anvil, or sorry, blank the Matryoshka so they can't use it, so the Anvil fires. I feel like that's a lot of work for very little payoff. Uh, so we can't trash cards. I don't think Hush has implemented well. So this is just a three-strand code gate with two subroutines. Um, they're relatively reasonable. Jailbreak is unlikely to win here. We can always last click pull the uh, Oaktown to hand. I think we're going to do that just to get one agenda out of the deck. This is the last click, so it's not like they can run HQ. Let's get the Oaktown out. So there's just one more, one fewer agenda in, in 26. Okay, nothing. No steal, no trash. They know we have this in hand. I would definitely like another piece of ice here. So I think we're going to try and find it. We want end the run ice. So if we do this, that's the problem is if we install this, maybe we should have pulled the Atlas. If we do install advance here, they have five credits, and it'll be Enigma into the Ice Wall. Uh, we have Zato, which means the Ice Wall is an end of the run, so they have to get through the Enigma a couple times. They can get through the Enigma exactly twice. We can Zato the end of the run. We can pull a half run on there. So that actually blanks a couple runs. Yeah, so I think we can do it, but like just barely. So we'll do Server 2. We'll advance this once. And I think here we just extract the Spin Doctor, or we just get the Hedge Fund. I don't know if we need actually six more credits. I think four credits. Is the Spin Doctor necessary? No, we'll just extract the Spin Doctor. We also know the top deck of R&D is, uh, is not an agenda, so we don't have to ice up R&D that much heavier. So if they don't get this, they can lose the game. We're on game point. Again, they've had economy issues, that's for sure, but they have what they need here, and now with two clicks left, we win the game 100% of the time. So this is the beauty here. So we're going to res Enigma. We're going to res the Yaakov. We're going to res the Mavirus. Instant speed. Purge virus counters, that doesn't do anything. We'll get the Yakov credits, that's nice. And we'll install a two cost, which is the half run. We can put that on server two. We trash a card from our hand, sure. Uh, hedge fund, doesn't matter. And then we'll blank the Matryoshka so they can't use the Matryoshka on this encounter, which means the Enigma is just gonna lose a click and end the run. We have a huge play against these AI type builds that only have one answer to solutions because we can always blank one answer, um, but that should be it. And that is our little kickflip there. And that's why I love Mavirus. Mavirus is just so flexible. It means we can pull it at instant speed whenever we want. And it can be on any server, like, like we can get the Stavka there. Good game. I do think our opponents struggled to get their economy up. Uh, and I think it was pretty clear. There was a lot of clicks for credits there. Just because, again, they need to get to, like, you always want to float around five to six credits just to make sure whatever you top deck you can, like, play. And merely they lost um, their, uh, what's it called? They paid a lot for an Earthrise and lost it. And now when they go back to, like, with Zato, we can Zato the half run, we can Zato the Enigma, and Zato the Ice Wall. So actually, we were in a pretty good spot because they have to run back. Um, so it's really hard. All right, we're in startup. This is our Clam and Tanker deck. Thanks, you too. And we've got three Mavirus in here to pull half runs and instant speed. And I'm hoping against Zaya, who might be on one of the Matryoshka type lists, uh, we actually have some good legs against that, considering at instant speed, we can just trash breakers. Uh, if we pull half run whenever they encounter either a Stavka or even the Roto Turrets that are in this list. I don't mind this opening hand. Uh, early Yankov is kind of nice uh, to get that going. We have Hedge Fund, we have Double Ice for Centrals. And assuming if Zaya's on Mat uh, Matryoshka, it, they might be on Endurance. I think Endurance is actually like definitely worth playing in just about every deck in startup for better or for worse. So we're gonna keep this hand, we can do worse. Uh, we ideally want another piece of ice for R&D and with 18 ice, we can usually get there. All right, opening hand. I do think we can just do, uh, we could just spin Doctor. Probably we can just spin Doctor here, see what we draw into. Uh, the problem though with that play is like, I don't wanna put half run on R&D. Admittedly, this is a card we have to trash at some point. Maybe we'll extract it, but we have it as a bluff. 
it's actually an interesting card in R and D because if they ever want to like jailbreak through this, you can always res it and be like, oh, surprise, uh, kind of pseudo border control type effect. But yeah, I think this is the best we got for now. And then next turn, we can kind of go off with the um, spin doctor and give ourselves some options. And just this turn too, if they're going to force us to res ice, and I feel like a lot of times the criminals should because uh, they get paid off of making successful runs. We want to play our hedge fund this turn before we have to res an enigma. Heffern, we're not going to res here. They can get an, an access and a credit. Unfortunately, we have 11 agendas in there. So yeah, some. Oh, off world off the top. Yeah, maybe we should have. But getting this res is actually not the worst. And we probably should have just res this. Like getting this res um, is uh, what we want to do to extract it anyways into an ice wall. So yeah, probably a mistake. They also know that this might just be like a Stavka or something that, or an Archer, something that we didn't want to res on this board state. I don't know if we would have res a Ballista uh, to pay five to end the run, but they might think that it's a sentry that has a, a specific board state it's trying to attack. We'll keep that in mind. There's a Zenit coming down after. They lost a Panweave. That's sick. Dirty Laundry here. Archives. It actually doesn't trigger the Zenit because they've already made a successful run this turn. Uh, they might be just learning that right now. And Earthrise coming down for four credits. Okay. Let's go. Oaktown, we obviously need double ice for that. We're going to play around inside job against criminals. Uh, this hand is ugly. There's, again, where we would have probably extracted the half run. So, yeah, we definitely should learn to res that. Let's drop once more. I'm a virus means at instant speed we can get a regolith. Mind you, the only ice we have in our deck we can pull is uh, not very good. It's the half run. But we want to keep that for a combo. So the question is, what do we do here? I think putting this in server one is fine. If they go and trash it, so be it. Uh, I think we'll let them trash the Spin Doctor. We're not that excited to recycle a hedge fund and then paying two credits, let alone it will trigger the Yaakov as well. So it kind of protects itself, which is kind of cute. It's worth noting that when you fire Spin Doctor, it removes it from game. So we don't get Yaakov credits unless the runner trashes it. Earthrise is a good card draw. We're going to want to ice up Archives um, just because they get the Zenit engine. And card draw is kind of a premium in startup. Earthrise Hotel is definitely a good start. But we probably want to manage your hand too to some extent. We might just want to spend some clicks drawing up. Red Team makes that Archives run so much better. Now we really want to ice up Archives. Uh, and they are on three credits. You're going to have six cards at hand and let's just get some ice. Oh, this is really cool. Admittedly for this, we want a breaker. So we actually don't mind resing a rota turret into no breakers. Uh, admittedly it'll keep them out, which a lot of their engine is run based, but at that point we can later pull a half run when they're interacting with this with, you know, like a, whatever their killer is, or maybe a Matryoshka and we can shoot them down. So I don't mind. Uh, we got to plan the rest of our turn though. Like we can Yakov, we can res the Yakov and extract it to get an ice wall. Um, It'll be res. That might be good enough for archives, honestly. We can keep road turret maybe for the remote server. I think that's an option. It's the most money we can get. What's the rest of our turn? Uh, I think drawing here is fine. The chance of us drawing into an ice wall is, you know, I guess we want to play around that. Do we get more value from this? No, I think we just get this. This is a good amount of money. So we'll do Yaka for credits. One cost. We'll get an ice wall in archives. Okay. I think now we can draw once. And we can just ice up this. Uh, we have to respect pinhole threading to some extent. And then once we get another ice here, we'll do uh, Mavirus and then push out the above the law to trash whatever resource they have. They're generally really good resources in the format for criminals. Losing nine credits on the red team is kind of nice. Now we're expecting them to be on Chesva, so the HQ runs or central server runs, mind you, will get a fair bit cheaper. And we haven't seen jailbreaks yet or any other run uh, multi-access. We're assuming maybe Maker's Eye, Finality. Those all make a lot of sense. There's a red team. So we're just going to res the half run here. We could have done this before, but no, that'll just be an end of the run. It's good enough. Probably should have done that earlier. We probably would have extracted this. Now the red team's going to hit the Enigma. Again, they're forcing us to res. Uh, we're going to lose a click there as well. But now they know we have ice on everything and a, just a fracture gets through. Or sorry, just a, I guess they need two types of ice, depending on what server they want to run. Because this is technically both a barrier and a code gate. We're three credits again. If they all have run based economy, this might slow them down a bit. And getting Matryoshkas down is a bit expensive. We're keeping them off the Zenit draw. They only have three credits, so they can't really play dirty laundries here. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Where we want a second ice on their mode server, and then we'll probably just push the Oak Town for more credits. I think this version has one government subsidy in it, which, like, it's kind of hard to play around a one of in your deck that has, like, a really strict credit threshold you need to respect. Don't love it, but, like, I feel like money is just a bit too low in this deck sometimes. Throughout a career fair, that's actually a really playable card, maybe. But maybe they just have red teams in their hand. All right, Stavka into Rota Turret. It's super rude. Kind of love it. Uh, and I think maybe they'll drop breakers and start getting accesses. So we kind of want to push from hand. So we have to do install, 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 which not the best. So I do think we probably can afford to draw once here. I'm worried about HQ pressure. Uh, let's see if we can find a better end to run ice. Okay, so we'll get that on server one. They might have, again, Metrioshka deals with this relatively okay. We'll get that on server one. And I think we'll get this in server one. It's obviously an upgrade. 
We could have considered trashing the spin doctor before we installed it so they don't know what this is, but next turn we'll pop this and then just like jam in the Oaktown. Hopefully that draws their attention. Earthrise finishes up. They're on four credits here. No free lunch. There's the wake. They lost the tremolo, so they seem to be on the sort of cybernetics type build. I think we could have guessed that. Generally, when you see Panweave, that's one of the cards that really kind of uh, insinuates that archetype. Because it's a card that doesn't make it into every list, but you really want to play it if you're playing Tremolo. But they only might be on two Fractors, so that's one Fractor down. And I feel like getting that down, they could break the Ice Wall for one. They can break the Half Run for, what is it, three credits? That's not the worst. But yeah, losing the Tremolo there is probably a bummer. Oh, never mind, second Tremolo. Okay, so Archives is wide open. That's okay, though. They're basically paying uh, one credit to get two in a card draw. That's actually still pretty efficient. Uh, but now we have our Program Destruction has teeth. So we could ice that up if we draw into a nice ice here. Oh, we have the subsidy. That's really funny. So this is Mavirus. So we can do install advance government. I think we have to do that. We're expecting to spend about eight credits. And then with the Mavirus, I don't know if there's anything we can get. The other option is to sync this if we want to push out the above the law. I think we're going to do this. Install. Oops. Might as well. Uh, we like extract and hedge fund. So we'll put this in server one. Inside job, we're pretty good too. We have Rototurd on the inside. And then here the question is, do we play Subsidy? They haven't shown a decoder just yet. We do want a nice for archives relatively soon. They also are open to R&D. Admittedly, at instant speed, we can always pull a half run and blank, uh, pull a half run with the virus and blank if they play like a Finality or Maker's Eye and then just blank their Tremolo, which is kind of cute. Uh, I think we just go for the money here. Advancing this once more is also like totally reasonable. I don't know if they're going to make us uh, res ice here when they're probably respecting Stavka. Again, that's probably their last factor. If we take this down, uh, again, I don't think they're on the Matryoshka. Um, we'll be in a really good spot. Oh, Cat's Grail Chesva. That's sick. That means actually we can't punish them here. Here, in theory, we could punish them. This access is pretty profitable. But here we could, at instant speed, pull the, pop them a virus to pull a half run. And I think we do. Yeah. I think we will do it. Okay, they undid that. So there might be like an actual run event. Oh, no, they're going R&D first. That's fine. That's really good. So again, now they have the Cheswick credits. Uh, now they also have a Fractor and a, a Decoder. They can deal with the half run. We can't stop that. But we're just going to want a Stavka or a Rotator. It's something mean. Once that connects, we're in a really good spot. So I think we want to keep them out of HQ. It's a fair bit of value. They've got their card draw. So here I do think we actually go for it. I think we have a virus here. So we're going to Purge. We're going to get a two-coster from our deck. It's going to be a half run. We have to remember that we only have one more half run in the deck for kick flips. Trash a card from HQ. Oh, yeah, I guess we have to, huh? Uh, what do we want to trash? I think the this. So they cannot use their cat's cradle, so that's going to end the run. They obviously lose a click, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right, so unfortunately here, oh, shit, the third half run, that's a really bad draw because then we can't do anything at instant speed. We're going to have to trash these with extracts to get them back in our deck. That was the thing with the deck when we had one or two half runs drawing them turns off the entire combo. But I think we're just going to score this out. This server is actually relatively expensive to run. Uh, I don't think it's that cheap, but we'll just score that out. Get our first points. It's just R&D. That's the issue here, right? Because they can run this and be cheaper to use. This is three credits. This is three credits. So it doesn't really matter. And it's basically free, let alone they get a credit with Zaya and then draw us a neat chip. So R&D is now a problem considering we have nine more agendas and 32 cards. So that's pretty good density. Almost one in three. But this server is scary. And unfortunately, we're going to have to trash our half run just so that we can spin doctor it back. I reckon next turn we're going to push out the spin doctor to get some options. All right, they're drawing up. Again, we have to keep them out. So much of their engine is run based. So obviously, slowing that down is of the utmost priority. They're generally not very good at running their mode server, barring inside job, just because they can't use their Chesva credits. And their Chesva credits are a lot. Like two, two of these um, Chesvas, that's obviously four cards a turn. That's nonsense for a single card. Now we're running HQ here. With the red team, that's good. They get their access, they get their wake implant, and then R&D has even more pressure. This is two types, so they can decide what they want here. We would love to obviously keep these two. Uh, the Mavirus is, for what it's worth, we can get a regolith at instant speed, which is cute. And running last click through this means you only spend two credits. Again, Cat's Cradle is not the cheapest breaker. Like, two to break an Enigma is kind of a lot. They're in. Let's see what they hit. Uh, the Mavirus. Uh, we'll purge. They probably trash. It costs zero. That's one of our cute tricks. We have one more virus in the list. All right, so they trashed it. We lost connection for a second. We have an Oaktown. Jamming Oaktown in this remote server, I'm feeling pretty okay about it. The only downside, for obvious reasons, is that R&D is wide open, let alone in, uh, if they have like their killer. I don't know what it would be. Maybe a Carmen? But then the Carmen has to deal with a seven-strength Stavka and the Rota turret, which I feel like, at that point, we should just push out of it. Again, running our HQ, how expensive was it? 
So this is three, this is two, and then they get one back and a card draw. So it's not the cheapest. Again, two of those credits are free because of the Chesma. So we'll see what they do here. Yeah, drawing to both the half runs is a bit ugly. 17 credits is good though. And again, this is really rude. And we can use the Stavka to go trash like, I guess at this point, trashing the ice wall is fine. They're breaking it for free. Um, we also just trash the half run to get it back in rotation, which is also kind of nice. Immediately we have to spin Doctor it back in, but uh, I think we care more about these centrals than archives. So if we have to trash something, we'll definitely trash the ice wall. For what it's worth, if they run last click, you can always trash the Oak Town, which is kind of good fun. And then we recover it with spin Doctor if we ever think they can get in. And immediately they have to be running last click so they don't just scoop it up from archives. Even forcing them to run there might be okay. Credit, credit. Let's see if they have a breaker here. Oh, inside job. Love it. That means the road turret's going to fire. So we don't actually have to do any tricks here. So it's just going to be that. They can choose to jack out, but otherwise we're going to hit the road turret, which is sick, considering we know that this is their last tremolo. Now, the question is. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's that's a mean one. The other question is we can shoot down the cat's cradle. We haven't I think we actually do sh shoot down the tremolo though. Cuz it's probably the last tremolo. And then in terms of barriers, we still have I think four left in the list. We have two ice walls and two uh what's it called? Mascarov cuts. And getting those on centrals is going to cause some issues. Obviously, that's the inside job we're playing ground, so we have to res both of these. And obviously, getting this to seven strength doesn't matter. Admittedly, we could have considered doing that to get a kickflip. Like we could have trashed the. It actually might have been right to trash the Stavka to get an ice wall, assuming that they were gonna. We knew they were gonna run this. I actually think we should have done the seven strength Stavka just to stop this from happening. Yeah, I think that's uh, something we definitely could have done. Single axis at the top. They're gonna see two. Sorry, double axis. No steel, no trash. Okay, that's fine. And they know we have a barrier, which is kind of sick. The question is where and how do we use this? So we probably want to score this out. It's actually relatively safe here. So we don't have to score it out. We can always advance it once more to gain two credits, technically three, but we spend one on it. Uh, and I, the game seems to be in R&D. I think if they run HQ, like the worst case is the spin. We know the top deck of R&D. So actually we might be okay leaving R&D open this turn and just getting the spin in the remote server. I think that's fine. This is the most important card. We just need to get barriers on the table because I don't think they have another tremolo. Um, we clearly didn't do our kickflip, but like, yeah, double century server. I don't think people are expecting, expecting Roto Turret. Okay, they're drawing up. Again, I'd be very surprised if they're on three tremolo. And at this point, we just have to set up the combo. Overclock, going HQ, I like this. One in three to be good, let alone to get all their value. Uh, so again, this is relatively expensive. They're not running, running last click, which is fine, uh, considering that they have a lot of credits on this. So you're gonna get through that. Again, this is both types. It's a downside to our deck for sure. We probably did want to trash that just to spin Doctor back in. Uh, that is an Enigma. That's going to be three credits again. It's free with the coffee in this. And there's a one in three bad hit here. Hit the Maskarovka. That's the one card they knew. So I think that's the best result here. They do have two Waken plants, so they could run R&D and see another card. Admittedly, it's a bit expensive this turn. Be two credits. Actually, not the bad, that bad. Uh, did they use their Zaya? They use their Zaya, though, so they're unlikely to go R&D. Sorry, the highlighted text breaks sometimes when you disconnect and reconnect. I'll try and refresh the whole page after this game. All right, let's start here. So it's all about them barriers. Um, I think we can maybe put the Alice in the remote server. This on R&D seems good. Uh, we want to get these out of hand for sure. It's going to be hard for them to get through this. Not impossible considering just one killer. This is actually two really cheap pieces of ice. What do we do here? We can also just fix our hand, right? So I'm thinking at this point with only they've gone through half their stack. They probably have their killer. It might just be a Carmen. Uh, if it's a Carmen, they get that down for five credits probably. Um, and then they can't run server one that easily. If we put the barrier on the outside, like they can still inside job it. Uh, but this is actually really cheap for Carmen, I think. Um, this is at least two credits. This can't be more than a worst case five credits, which maybe that's difficult. But inside job changes that. I think just getting two barriers on R&D and HQ is going to be a big deal. So I'm going to draw once. Okay. Um, we want to discard cards before we shuffle with Spin Doctor. So I think we can draw once more and then just put Massacre on R&D. We can keep one agenda in HQ. We haven't seen any jailbreaks, have we? So I'm assuming there might be a legwork or jailbreak. We haven't seen a Docklands Pass either. Oh, they threw out a Carmen. Whoa, it threw out a Carmen. So this actually is only four credits to run. So they probably have another Carmen in hand considering they threw out a Carmen and a mutual favor. So I don't think our server one is safe. I think barriers are the best thing we have here. Unfortunately, we don't have that many of them. Uh, okay, so I think we can throw out two. They're actually pretty safe behind Ice Wall. That means that we can draw once more. Oh, sick. Two barriers is perfect. So we'll put that on R&D and here we can discard some cards. We could consider keeping a single agenda. I don't think we're in a real rush to do that. I think R&D is really safe. Archives is relatively safe. And then we're going to try and put two barriers on server one to play around inside job. Uh, might be a bit of a grind, but I think we can get there. 
Uh, we also can like extract our half runs to make the mice walls. But right now HQ is obviously the open server and that gives them wake and plan charges, which, you know, makes it very, very lucrative in the next couple turns. That's the problem is that we want to keep them out of HQ. And the other option is like to just set up the Mavirus again, because if they face tank into, I guess we would need another Stavka here. And they have to respect the Stavka. That being said, they do know we are on Maskarovka. I think there is a good chance keeping one agenda is good, but I don't think we need to push out in remote server in the next couple turns. But always keeping your agendas on hand is, is useful. Drawing to a hostile would be good too. Obviously giving bad pub to somebody who wants to run every turn, it's a bit dicey. But otherwise, we're going to score two more agendas anyways. We'd like to be able to score one from hand. Oh, shit. Oh no, they are on endurance. Everyone's on endurance. Of course they are. Uh, that is something we can play around to some extent. Uh, they're going to be sailing, getting their one counter return, but that means that the Mascarofa is going to keep them out. Again, you should probably just play Endurance in every deck. I think it's the reality of a startup. So let's see if that gets addressed at some point. So here, they cast Cradle through this one. Uh, they probably can just Enigma through, uh, sorry, can they just break through this? Again, they have four credits. But it's going to be hard to keep them out, considering they're going to value their Endurance charges. It's really tricky right now in startup to build a deck that just is like, oh, my ice is going to be good or hard to deal with, uh, considering Endurance will get you. Uh, you can't actually deal with endurance. I think you'd have to not play Roto Turret and play like uh, what's it called? Uh, Ansel 1.0 and then like Zato Grid. But yeah, now four bow counters is really good. We didn't see a lot of influence. We didn't see any console too, so maybe we could have guessed that. But I do think like probably right in just about every deck to play this. They got their Zaya credit. They got their HQ access, which was a uh, Maskarovka. No surprise. And we have an offworld in their remote server again. They can run their remote server. Credits might be an issue. They play two overclocks. We are pretty sure they have a Carmen in hand, but they can just boat boat through this. Now, if we get this down, they have to do boat, boat, boat. Uh, they could always do credit inside job and they'll get through everything. But I don't think we're in a rush to do it. Cool thing about half run on their mode server is that if they run through it, unfortunately, the half run will be on the outermost. We can block the boat, which means they just have to run back. But ideally, we half run them when they get to the Rota turret, which is like the beauty of having um, uh, either a Stavka here or the beauty of having um, the Maviruses. So I think that's worth shuffling in. Uh, that's a yikes. I do think we want this on HQ. They can always run archives to get a boat counter, um, but I feel like we're coming ahead on that. So we just need to get the barriers out front. Let's draw once here. Okay, that's actually really not good. So we'll get this on HQ and then we can just hit this. Uh, we, yeah, kind of hard to play out from this spot. And I think that's kind of to some extent, like one of the problems with having rig destruction being very good in startup format is that it naturally like just progresses everyone towards playing endurance uh, because it solves all your issues. Um, if you print good eyes, this deals with it well. I think there's actually an argument here to trash the half run, but they are paying good credits on the half run, considering like Cat's Cradle does not like three credits to get through a two cost dice. Yeah, I'll take it. So let's see if we can keep them out. They have only 20 more cards clicking for credits. Sounds about right. Uh, they might not have influence for things like liberated accounts or like uninteracted based economy. We've drawn five agendas so far. Like that's five. There's only three agendas and 22 cards left. We've drawn just about everything. Um, that's obviously upsetting. So what can we do here? We can use the Spin Doctor to shuffle back in. Couple things. We definitely want the massive Maviruses because they get half runs, but then we have to get the half run back in too. So like we can consider just pushing out here. Unfortunately, we know this remote server is a bit weak and they have more cards than they did the turn before. So if anything, we can just like pop in the Regolith and hope that they run it. I think that's reasonable. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before HQ gets leg worked and we just lose. Because like we're not pushing, so we have to do something. So we'll shuffle the agendas back in again. I do think at some point they'll call the Ice Wall. So let's just do something that forces them to consider interacting. Hard for them to pinhole on this board, so they might just have to call it here. And if we get a 3-2 score like an Atlas, um, we're on game point with the existence of a uh, hostile takeover. So they might have to respect this a bit more. So four credits. They might think this is the Maskarovka. You have to assume they probably have another inside job at some point. They've gone through all of their deck, let alone they probably have a Carmen in hand, considering they've been discarding other Carmens and mutual favors, which means, you know, they probably don't need those cards. So the question is, what's better in hand? They have four hand size. They need to take a core damage here. And they can also just run R&D and C3 cards, which is, it's not the biggest issue for us, considering we know where most of our agendas are. That being said, we just shuffled two more in. So there's five and 24. So about one in five, which is what you would expect. Let's see what they do here. That's the issue, right? Like we don't go fast enough with some of our program destruction tricks. All we have is like mid range eyes. All right, they're going for it. We're going to res the Massacre of here. Again, this might just be them seeing three, getting a card draw, seeing three credits. But this they have to boat through, and we want to do anything we can to make them spend boat counters. Uh, just because then we have the remote server. And it looks like they're not checking this. Which again, if they lock the top of R&D, we'll never draw into our um, 
the thing that we want to draw into. All right, so this is only one credit if they uh, catch Cradle through this with coffee. And let's see how many cards. They're going to see all three of them. One, two, three. The last one seems to be a trashable. Unfortunately, we just have a regular. I wish we pushed out the Atlas, but I thought they would call us here. Three bow counters is, means that they can't run through this, so we could just like res, fire, fire, and then put it in the Atlas. Not that we need the money so much. It's worth noting this costs us three to res because of the Cat's Cradle. And they're not trashing the card at the bottom. I don't know if it, I reckon it's a Zato. That's probably the one they're considering. Um, and just seeing whether they're going to give up on the remote server because Zato is a good draw for us. I think on this version of the list, we're only on three Zato. They have eight credits though. Maybe they can charge us remote server. There's the Carmen coming down. Okay. So we have a magnet. Res for four. They break it for three. So not the worst. The Carmen can deal. So this is four credits. Uh, the half run, that means we can blank the Carmen. So they'd have to, the problem is like, yeah, half run out here is actually really bad. I don't know what to do here. They could face check HQ here. We need to get the endurance counters down. Uh, we also know the next cards in R&D are like totally safe. And I think there's a Zato uh, two down below this. I think I'm going to do this. It just doesn't progress our board state. And the more they click for credits, the better they are at contesting this remote server. Ugh, uh, what could we get here? Ice walls are great. Just like extracting a half run for an ice wall is like one of the better things we can do because it's like the honestly genuinely taxing piece of ice we have. Uh, we have three extracts and 23. So we can consider drawing ones for an extract. It's an anvil. Five credit res uh, with a cradle. Yeah, I think this is good enough. I don't think they have to run R&D anytime soon. Yeah, I think that's fine. This is expensive. Um, I don't want to res this and click it because they still might think it's an upgrade. Uh, and I guess it gets faster to emptying it out, which actually is worth something here. But then maybe, I don't know. I don't think they endurance to pinhole it through ice wall. Yeah, if they didn't have an endurance, obviously this is very different. Um, as most games are. The fact that we got all the half runs down and lost to um, the viruses is probably the worst part. I'd love to be able to spin bet Doctor back the viruses, but then that's only relevant if we have half runs in our list. Like in our stack. In our R&D. Sure gamble, they're up at nine. They're drawing through here. So this card's useful. Again, it allows us to trash our half runs to get ice walls, which is ultimately going to be the thing that taxes out the endurance best out of any ice in our deck, barring Maskarovka. And there's a Dawkins Pass, so the HQ run is coming. Uh, we'll res the Maskarovka here for sure, but we can't just lose on this run. It just, it'll be bad for us. So here they have to commit. It's a bit expensive. That's two boat counters. And then if they whiff or whatever they do or don't steal, we have to push in their mode server. Unfortunately, behind a three credit half run, it's not great. So I do think we're just going to lose here slowly. Cool thing about this, it's an economy card. And they're going to get a card draw off of this and then two credits and a wake charge. A lot of value. Sell Regolith. Okay. See a magnet? Alice. Beans. Okay. Endurance. That it was a Zato. So I think we called that correctly. So the question is, what do we want to do in the remote server? I don't think they'll ever run the remote server because they're scared of this on its own being a Zato. Unfortunately, if we install an agenda, we show that it isn't a Zato. Uh, but Dawkins Pass are probably going to fire that, I wouldn't say every turn, because eventually they'll be out endurance counters. The question is, like, how cheaply can they run this? I think we have to push next turn, so we'll just res, take, take. And then we'll keep this in hand, so there's five cards in hand instead of four. And then next turn we can do install, install, advance. It's probably the best that we have. Uh, the top of R&D now should be unknown, if I'm not mistaken. Resting the anvil and trashing a card to force them to trash one of their installed cards is actually an interesting proposition, because all their cards are relatively good. It's probably the Zenit that goes. They can't trash breakers. Chesva has two credits a turn, which is nonsense. And then most of their other hardware is good. Maybe they can trash a Docklands Pass. Maybe. All right. So they just clicked up. They're able to discard two cards. It's an Earthrise and uh, an Endurance. So they're on 10 influence worth of Endurance. Not a surprise. We have an Extract here. I do think we just push this out because we have to do install advance. We'd love to extract that for an ice wall. Uh, maybe we could have gone slower. Maybe we don't need the Zato, but I think they're going to respect the Zato here because if we Zato a Stavka and trash their cast cradle, then, you know, it gets a bit more difficult. I think it's pretty very likely that they have another cast cradle. A lot of the criminal lists are running two of each breakers for, you know, this sort of reason. Uh, so we'll see if they charge the remote server. And the half run's actually kind of interesting. We can spend three credits to tax them a click because they basically have to end the run and come back. So that can matter, especially the way that it stacks with Zato. And we can always just like when they come back, Zato away the half run and go get a, a nice wall, which is nice. A nice wall. We do have to trash a card from hand to do the half run. Just forget about that. That's fine. I don't think we're going to use this magnet. I just want to keep more cards in hand so it's not like we lose the legwork or whatever. They're drawing up, maybe looking for that sweet, sweet inside job. A lot of lists are on two copies. And then once we score this out, it all becomes about R&D lock, right? Because if we top deck a hostile, we can win. 
but it's going to be tricky. It's hard to tech into this. Like the only way that we can unfairly deal with endurance is like do an endurance trick with either Hafrun or Zato. And a lot of decks won't just will ignore Zato. They just will try and win off centrals. And you know, Zai is really good at that. This is five to res. This is three to res. We got to remember that. That's a lot of money. And for what it's worth, like this off world office used to be, uh, what's it called? Um, a Kimberlite field. And we couldn't trash the cat's cradle if we square out the Kimberlite. Is that better than credits on this board state? Not exactly, because we obviously have extract and regolith if we want to go slower. And trashing the cat's cradle here would be super important. So maybe this is like a good reason why not to play off world and to play Kimberlite. I just recently switched this back to see how it works in testing. All right. Oh, I would love to Kimberlite it here. But now it's all about RD. We have 14 credits. And we can use this anvil to trash the half run to get an ice wall in RD. But we have two and 19 hostels that we can top deck and win from here. They still need to run server one if we put something in it, which now on game point, like they have to run into this and have to dress Sato if they can't put pressure on centrals. So here, I think we have to extract the half run to get an ice wall, either on R&D or on HQ, just to stack the barriers. They're drawing into probably an inside job. I think they want an inside job HQ just to, con to conserve their, um, their endurance counters, maybe a legwork or like R&D multi-axis. I don't know. They've spent 10 influence so far on endurances and uh, we've seen... No other influence. So I don't know if they're on three boats. I reckon they might be on like a, a twinning to take them to 13 and then two influence spent on, I don't know, something. We'll find out. Draw one more. You're going to discard five cards here again. doesn't matter. Discarding cards. You just need to find the cards you need to win the game. But if we top deck, we have a 2 and 19 of just winning right here on the spot with a hostile off the top. Let's see what they're going to discard. Two pin ultra readings, awake and a Chesva. Okay. I think Chesva is actually a relatively good card, but if the game's going to end soon, it's going to end soon. All right, I think we want to put an Alice in their mode server. I do think we want to extract for an ice wall. That means that we extract for an ice wall and we trash this half run. Like the only way they can run R&D, uh, it's to use a lot of boat counters, which they can't do this turn. So I think we're going to try and fork a bit. So we're going to put the win in the remote server, which we have Zato uh, half run. So that's good. And then we're going to get uh, two barriers on R&D, which they'd have to inside job. Unfortunately, our barrier will be on the outermost, so it's not amazing. Um, this also takes a non-agenda out of the deck. So we'll get an ice wall. We'll just put that on R&D. Okay, we'll put this in server one. And the question is, what do we do with our last click? Uh, we can just put the magnet here on server one. It plays around inside job, but we'd have to res it. Drawing last click is pretty bad here, but we have Zato and then we can Zot half run trash a card. I feel like this is fine. We don't need to advance this once. But now we have two barriers here. They might inside job this and then see a couple cards on R&D. And yeah, we could lose to that. They get flush HQ, they get one agenda point, then if they run the remote server, but we have half run, which will end, will blank a breaker or a boat. Then they have to come back, we'll Zato it, and then they have to deal with this stuff. And we can always Zato the road turret. So I think we're in an okay spot. Clicking for a credit is fine. I want to keep cards in hand to play around the Dawkins Pass and probably like a uh, jailbreak this turn. But the Zato is going to do some real work here. They've all but one card. It's inside job. They're going here for R&D. So that tracks. Uh, they can see only two cards here. So there's a chance we lose. It's kind of unlikely. Q4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's only four more agendas and 17 cards. Now they can swing our HQ here. So, uh, or R&D here. So I do think we want to just like get rid of this half run. I think we roll res the anvil. It costs five, but money's not a problem. And we can trash the half run. We can, in theory, get defensive upgrades here if we had them. Uh, unfortunately, all our half runs are accounted for. Because otherwise we could also, on this run, like in theory, if we had a half run, we could use this to trash a three coster to go get a half run to blank the Mascarovka. The problem is all their half runs are out of our deck. So we will trash a card. This is not so much impactful as it is to get an ice wall out on HQ. So they can't run HQ this turn. Uh, that being said, they won't be able to run HQ anyway. So I don't think we need to do this. It takes one non-agenda out of R&D, which is probably not worth it. But with this, they'll only have one, one boat counter. So it's not like they can run HQ. So I think we'll be fine. Nah. Yeah, we want to keep the non-agenda cards in R&D. So they can break this if they'd like to. They don't have to. They can, like, if they think it's the last turn, they can always just trash one of their installed cards. Like this Earthrise Hotel is probably worth trashing. I don't know if the card draw is worth it. They're going to pay a credit anyways. Us going to 17 doesn't matter. So I don't think you have to break this. It's much more expensive. Oh, they're breaking it. Okay. So it's two for strength. And then you have to break it any amount of subroutines. Again, if you're paying four credits to keep one card draw on Earthrise and keeping the credit swing, I don't know if you need to do that. All right. So they spend a fair bit here. This they have to boat through. And they're going to see two cards. You're going to get two credits and a card draw, the last card. So yeah, this Earthrise Hotel you can definitely trash. We have to get a bit lucky here or we just have to not get unlucky, which seems to be the case. So they have one click to run their mode server. So with a half run, that's impossible. With the Zato, that's impossible. So I think we're just going to squeak through here. Card's interesting. Like, I don't know. People respect it because they don't want to rip up their board. 
you do see people install like unnecessary cards, which yeah, it's good. I think that's a good way to play around it. If one last run here, they do know we've the Zato. Oh, uh, they're running it. Okay, cool. So what can we do? We can just Zato this away. We haven't fired Zato in a long time. So we'll res this, we'll res that. Uh, oh, we can just blank. Yeah, we'll just trash this. So it blanks their decoder. So that just ends the run. We don't have to Zato this, but they have no way of breaking this because it is a code gate. You saw here they lost one of their breakers early. They lost the tremolo to damage and that happens. But like, that's obviously one of the downsides of, uh, we don't need to fire that as cool as it was. We don't need to fire that. And that should be it. We did get one of our three twos. There's only four in the list. A hey, good game. And we'll just score that out. All right. So we didn't find the hostels. They knew what we we're drawing into. Good game. Yeah, it's worth knowing today uh, in standard format. Endurance got banned. Uh, no changes yet for startup. And I know that null signal is going to be balancing startup. But yeah, you see here, right? Like if you're worried about rig destruction, playing endurance is one of the best things you can do. Triple endurance. <laughs> oh, they're on triple endurance. Oh, wow. That's so wild. Yeah. OK. All right. All right. So that's why, right? Like if they want to get economy, that's not run based. You can play liberated accounts. You can do other stuff. But they're playing triple endurance, which again, I think you can even play one of and still play a penny shaver or two. Hey, cheers. You too. But yeah, triple endurance. That's not something our deck wants to run into, but at least if we trash a breaker, we can make it a bit more interesting. And we had some really good plays if the half runs were back in the deck. Let's do another one. All right, we're playing startup climbing tanker. We have a whole bunch of program destruction. The fact that we can with Mavarius pull the, the half runs at instant speed is generally really good. The question is now, how often are we running into endurance? And let me tell you, as soon as I was excited to get some testing with this deck, we've been running into endurance in I think every game besides one. It doesn't really matter what faction you're playing in. Uh, basically, everybody's playing Endurance and Startup right now, which, you know, it got banned in Standard. Maybe we can see that happen here. Uh, but otherwise, if Sable is just on, uh, you know, like normal criminal breakers, maybe even Matryoshka, we can have an okay spot. I like this Matryoshka Enigma for central servers. Those are okay. And then we can do a Rota turret with either Zato and then a Regolith forward from that. We don't want to score ice behind a single piece of ice because of inside job, but we definitely want to keep uh, Sable out. So we're going to try and at least ice every single uh, central server in the first couple turns. Archives is the least important. So we've been making some changes with this list. It's really hard to address endurance because we're very good at saying, hey, that thing can't break ice this run. But it's very hard for us to do, hey, those two things can't break ice this run, uh, which means endurance plus a breaker gets through. So I think we'd rather it doesn't really matter the order here. Um, we're going to have to click for credit. I think we probably ship at the Maskarovka where we think they're more likely going to face check in the early game, which actually probably is HQ. Maybe not so much after a mulligan, but I'd rather spend one credit on this in the early game uh, than rob a click and go down to three. Immediately, we can res both of them. Uh, Virtuoso. Okay, cool. Marcus Archives. Wow, we can actually get Virtuoso in turn one. So we definitely need to ice up Archives. So they're going to get their money. It's a free run. They see a Zato from HQ. They probably want to trash that. But this means they're not on endurance. So at least we know we have a different angle of attack. And there goes down to Zato. They're only on one credit. So also against Swaylin, to some extent, you have to try and respect public trail into whatever. Not that we're playing any of that, let alone whatever. Uh, but two credits now. This is the thing to see whether we can just ice up everything and then their entire uh, kind of engine falls apart. Uh, that sometimes does happen. Now, I don't want to put a road turret on archives. The chance of them rolling archives again, it's one in three. Not really related statistics. We could just jam this out on a remote server. Again, inside job burns through it. I think we just do something like this. This is okay. Again, archives mark is the punish here. HQ is pretty good. And it's an enigma. That's okay. Uh, Virtuoso is really interesting. When they make a successful run on their mark, they get a breach HQ. Unless uh, their mark was HQ, then they just see another card, which is okay. Uh, it's kind of HQ multi access really depends on what point in the game it is. It's really good right now, considering we've gone through about nearly 10 cards and we've shuffled nothing and scored out nothing. So you can assume there's about one and a half agendas in HQ here. So uh, we need to fix up archives. Just getting like a uh, an ice wall there would be good enough, let alone like an enigma or an anvil. Let's see what breakers they have. Inside job, go in HQ. Cool. The answer they see the two cards. That's actually really interesting. Um, we could consider resing the enigma. Not that it does anything, but it means it'll be res. So if we have to op something, but they're going to see two cards here. Purge, sure. Doesn't do anything. They can trash that. That's actually a really good card for us. And they're seeing the Kimberlite. So they got the agenda there. I was clickless. Now, this is where they trade like a lot of aggression for, you know, any semblance of economy here on zero credits. There's very little they can do. So they just have to click for credits. So that aggressive line, I think, makes some sense considering it's early game. Where we're very likely to have an agenda there and they're going to see half our hand. Uh, but it might cost them for the next couple of turns if they can't get like a, a dirty laundry or a carpe diem. That's not good. So we can push out the regular thin remote server. But at that point, you know, we get heavily punished by uh, what's it called by a mark on uh, archives. Let's draw once more and then. This is bad. 
Oh, we've been drawing so many agendas. We have 11 in the deck. We've drawn three in the top 11. That's a, one more than you'd expect at that point. Uh, we just need to mark up archive. Archives is the mark two here. So like we can lose really quickly. I wonder if we should have just respected it and put the road turret on archives. I would hate to do it, but I do think there's a chance. Now here it's a half percent. There's 50% chance for them to steal an agenda. Some virus, of course. And after that, they breach HQ. Regolith. Okay. They can trash that they want. We have another one. It does clear cards on hand, but again, their economy is falling apart. If we just get like, if we top deck any ice for archives, I think they're going to have to click for credits for a couple turns because we can afford to res just about everything and we'll have a regolith. Fermenter, that's nice for us to get down, um, considering we have three Mavirus, let alone if they ever run archives, they just purge themselves. Uh, Stopcon archives is like a bit ugly. Admittedly, once it's rezzed, we can kind of just trash it. I think we can draw once for a better ice. Oh, I hate myself. Um, we'll put that there. We'll res this and fire it. I don't actually think we res this and click it. I think we'd rather have like the mystery of what it is. Admittedly, actually, when this finishes, this is the same for clicking for credit. Admittedly, though, it gives them the information of what this is. Uh, but we just basically, you know, spent a click to gain three after paying two. Um, but the upside to this is that the sooner we empty this, the sooner it converts itself using the op ability into an ice wall. So there is some benefit of just getting this done as soon as possible. Now, that being said, if they end up going through a Stavka, it just trashes a fermenter. Like, that's not good for them, but it means that the archives is now open, which was the mark there. Okay, Anvil's way better there uh, than anything else. Do we just posh up, pop out with a hostile takeover? It might scare them off of Archer. Uh, bad publicity is really bad for a deck that definitely wants to run once a turn, but we have to get the agendas out of hand. And uh, our remote server would be Roto Turret into Zato into Anvil, which is not amazing. That's some bad pub. We're on 13, though, so we can res definitely everything. And there's some respect that has to be made around Archer, um, which is kind of rare in the format, but uh, I think it's quite good. It's hard. Again, high strength sentries are just really good in the format, barring endurance. Even against endurance, Archer is great. There you go. That is the economy they need to be. Now they're on nine credits. They can definitely play any card they draw from their deck. But when you're on one to three, it's like really awkward. So taking those two turns off to get up to nine is kind of what they needed to do. And maybe they, we weren't going fast enough. So that makes sense. But like they can get away with that. All right, there's the ice wall. Okay, cool. So we can push in remote server. We have Zato Rota turret if we want to build. Um, I think we can just make sure whatever server we're least scared about is iced up a bit better. Uh, currently, Enigma is on there. We're assuming uh, they might be on Unity, which is not a great decoder. We can put the Zato in the remote server to set up. Next turn, we could do install, install, install. But this is a 4-2. I think we just hit this once more. I want to keep cards in hand because it's not unlikely that they manage to like get some sort of access this turn. And then if they hit, um, well, HQ now, let's see two cards. Oh, Matryoshka. We love to see Matryoshka. We are very capable of dealing with that. A big part of that is Mavirus and program destruction. But if they invest heavily on this and we bring down a big stack of Matryoshka, we're in an okay spot. Now, Enigma is going to be a problem. They're going to see it. two cards on HQ here. Enigma, if they run last click, they break for uh, one credit. They didn't run last click, so it's still one credit with Bad Pub, but it could have been free. But now we need to get some defenses up there or even just like Kimber Lightfield. Yeah, getting Mavirus here would be sick. Getting a Stavka or drawing a Rotor Turret also be really good. And they're through. Two cards here because of the uh, Virtuoso Ice Wall is the first one, and Alice is stolen. Okay, we only have one more agenda in hand. This will become an Ice Wall, which means it just requires them to have more Matryoshkas, which is good, but this sort of pressure converts relatively well. And also they got the click back with Sable and two more cards for Info Bounty, so it's pretty good. This is uh, one of the matchups right now, like the way the game is playing out. The Virtuoso is doing a fair bit better than Penny Shaver. Admittedly, money was an issue for them, but now with this Fermenter on four, I don't think that's going to be a problem for much longer. I would love to top deck him a virus. They're cracking it. Okay, still a good top deck. Okay, that's not good. So what do we do? They only have one breaker. So we the problem is like we could always trade Zato into Rota Turret to um, anything here. We also in theory could like, well, no, it's really hard here. This is really quite difficult. We have just too many agendas and we can't push out. Like this is where we, you know, maybe we respected the centrals too much and iced this up where in theory the stuff on the remote server would have been way, way more preferable. We can draw into, we have three spin doctors that would help here. Do we still have a sprint? That's good. That's definitely good. So I'm going to do this first because they might run it. So one cost, we'll put the ice wall on HQ, I guess. And then we'll put this in the remote server. Why? Um, it means at instant speed, if they run into the roto turret, we can trash this by pulling a half run from our deck. And that's kind of nice. It's hard for them to pinhole on this board. They can run R&D here, which is okay. Again, one, two, three, four, five. We only have six agendas and 31 cards, so one in five. But now at this point, if they ever run the Mavirus, we can pull out a half run and then just stop this thing. We can say, you can't use it, which ideally if they're running into destroy program subroutines, that's the best case for us. So we res the stuff. We make it seven strength, which they can deal with, but they can't deal with half runs. So we're going to 
res Stavka. In theory, how we do this doesn't really matter. We could get a free purge, but. So that's a half run. It's on archives. Not the best place, but it's where we have to put it. We have to trash a card, though. That's a bit annoying. And so now they can't use the Matryoshka. So we can trash two programs. It'll only be one program. Excuse me. Uh, we just have to trash the hosted one. Yeah, that's the Mavirus. The Mavirus can get you here. We're still in a bad spot because you're going to access HQ after this and 50% chance considering we did the half run. Uh, so that's, you know, a bit rough. All right. So again, 50% chance puts them on game point, And then even then, I don't think uh, we're in a great spot. Archives. Mavirus, of course. And they get access HQ. Second Mavirus. Access HQ. Zato. Okay. They can trash that. They have good money. The question is if they have the breakers to support it. And even just trashing cards in HQ makes it attrition from Virtuoso build up. But we have two ice here, and they might not be in real breakers. We've played two of them are Bavirus, um, which means, you know, uh, we don't have that trick that often. We still have two half runs in the deck, though. And two Zatos are down. Mutual favor for Matryoshka. They're installing that, so they have one breaker on the table. Uh, oh, my lord. What's happening here? Let's draw for a spin. There you go. Do we want to put in server one? I think we do. Because I don't think we're interested in putting much else out there. I think we draw out for one here and discard. Yeah, I think we just want to get rid of cards. Okay, so we'll get rid of... I think we'll keep the three two. It's the one that we can push out. And mainly Kimberlite Field is like the most impactful because we trashed Matryoshka. Actually, yeah, I think we will do that. I'll just try and keep a one and five on HQ. So they can't do anything with a single... Just the Matryoshka itself. So they need other support pieces. There's only three more Matryoshka. So at most, if they get everything down and we don't do any more program destruction, they can only trash three cards. Uh, break three ice a turn. Uh, Zato here would be good. We just have to force him to run in. A lot of times they'll just try and win off central servers, which is the criminal thing. All right, so I think our opponent uh, just wanted to walk through what happened there with the Stavka Hafren combo nation. I reckon they haven't seen it before. It's a bit of like a really nuanced thing because it has a bunch of strange timing stuff. Ooh, backstitching. That's really good. Yeah, so that's a backstitching. Uh, they're going to need at least another Matryoshka to run. <laughs> HQ, but again, HQ can be two cards this turn. So backstitching is just like a hard thing to deal with. Backstitching for what it's worth is like a way to deal again with the Stavka Hafren combo as long as you're running a central server uh, because you can just, you know, yeah, you can bypass the ice and you're encountering. It doesn't work on the remote server for Zato um, because of obviously Mark stuff, but Zato fires the subroutine. Please stop drawing agendas, my friend. So I'm going to draw once because I want to have more cards in. Okay, so check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's three agendas and 23 cards. Yeah, it's not great. I thought we wouldn't draw more agendas here. We're going to shuffle these back into R&D, and eventually their R&D like backstitching will just get through this. Um, but ideally with the Zato into the Kimberly field, we have to just get agendas out of our hand. Like drawing agendas into Virtuos is the worst thing you can do. And we haven't been doing a great job clearing them from our hand. Like, that's true. Uh, they just aren't putting enough pressure on that slows the game down. And again, just putting pressure on means that, you know, HQ pressure connects more often than not. But they can run HQ here and just win. Sure gamble, they're on 13. They just need another Matryoshka. Even another backstitching would do it, wildly enough. But yeah, we're going to get really lucky here if we're going to get this out. Questions too is whether they respect the um, Rota turret. But yeah, this on its own doesn't do anything. In theory, you can always just boost strength if you need to like get credits from your Chezvas onto your, uh, onto your uh, what's it called, the Twinnings. But on its own, it doesn't really do much. So here, we probably want to shuffle back in the agendas. It's kind of hard to not. They have some reason to run archives eventually if the mark is there and they get access HQ. Like maybe this will at some point be a cheap server. I don't think so. Um, Stop gone its own two strengths. Not the best. They threw out a career fair and a no free lunch. Okay. We haven't seen a lot of career fair targets. So assuming there's like Earthrise or other good stuff in there. All right. Uh, let's just go crack this. We'll put two more agendas back in circulation, which isn't great. Um, I do think we can just do install advance here. Uh, we'll have Zato Ice Wall Rota Turret, which is kind of hard to deal with. Again, if we ever have to Zato the Ice Wall, uh, we can just go get a Spin Doctor, shuffle away the agenda, which is nice. And we're going to click for credit. We can just extract, but I want to just keep as many cards in hand because they are pressuring HQ from basically all Virtuoso servers, let alone um, uh, even just the HQ mark sees more cards. And this is a Masquerovka. They could run. We could spend three. We'd be on 11. That's still comfortable for us. And if they end up backstitching through R&D, there's five agendas and 24 cards, so... They would need multi-access for that to be obviously feel a bit better. I don't know if you want to trade a backstitching on a single access, but it's also an HQ access. So it actually is a fair bit better than it looks, let alone the two credits and its click list. So yeah, the value proposition can be there. You have to hope that both of these whiff because they could win on this run, right? Like rip from R&D, rip from HQ. They're through with backstitching. Let's go. Okay. HQ. 
hit the extract. Great. That's why we kept those in hand. Again, we could have got three to six more credits, uh, but I don't think we want to. That's good too. Now they're further away from getting into HQ naturally um, without, you know, they need more Matryoshkas. And they haven't played a lot of draw. Like we haven't seen Zenit. We saw a Steel Skin Scarring, but we also haven't seen any Earthrise. So like draw might be keeping them back. And Criminal right now in the format doesn't have amazing card draw. If they host another Matryoshka. We can kind of get them good. And I think here we'd probably trash the Stavka. Um, we can get a three cost around there. Sure, Gamble. Okay, so we're just gonna bring down a Matryoshka, which puts them at only three more Matryoshka. We can trash anything though, right? Do we just trash the Virtuoso? I think we trash the Virtuoso, man. I think we're gonna lose the Virtuoso. I think they have to find their other Matryoshkas, which they haven't so far. Let's see what they discard. If they discard another console, we might do it. They discarded a Zenit and a Panweave. So I wonder if they have cards in hand. They just don't want to take damage to discard. All right, if we score this out, we're underneath government subsidy, but you know, what can you do? So it's either getting rid of the Matryoshka or the Virtuoso. I'm going to respect the Virtuoso. Um, we have other ways to trash programs. There's not a lot of ways in the format to trash hardware. We get a three coster. If we trash this, we don't have the ice archives that well. Immediately with 19 credits, they can slam down another Virtuoso. So it's either the Enigma or Mavirus. Mavirus is actually kind of useful. Enigma is just good though. And so we'll trash that. Cards on hand. Um, subsidy is like very playable. I don't know if we need to extract. It kind of gives us more like, you know, the op ability that we can use. But I feel like we can't really trash most of our ice. All right, we trashed Virtuoso. I've never done that before. Feels okay. I'm actually really scared of that card because we've been drawing a lot of agendas. But so the op ability just to like reposition your ice. Um, we traded a two strength ice for a two strength ice and we probably positioned it a bit better, especially without a Virtuoso. But I wouldn't be surprised if they slammed down another Virtuoso with 19 credits. They just need to likely find more Matryoshkas. So here we're going to have to score two more agendas. Install Advance Advance. We could do that next turn if we wanted to. Again, Ice Wall, Roto Turret, Chesva. That's coffee. Carpe Diem. Just for the credits, the mark was on R&D. We have an Anvil, which is annoying. Um, it's hard for them to rip up their board state. Not that we want to either. And at this point, we have to assume they have mother, multiple copies of Matryoshka. So I still think we can push this in the remote server. Advance. Uh, we cannot op. Again, cards in hand is nice. We'll just go up to 10 here. This can be relatively expensive. We might have to spend four, five, six, seven, eight up to with Zato. But also here, the cool thing with Ice Wall is we ever have the Zato Ice Wall and we think they can get back. Uh, we can just, you know, uh, go get a Spin Doctor at instant speed, which is nice. There's a backstitching R&D as the mark. Again, two ice here. So they're just going to need another card. And in terms of agendas in the deck, one, two, there's five and 21. Second Matryoshka is there, though. And they're going in. So they're going to use a backstitching on this. It's just a single access on R&D, which I think we're generally f feeling okay about that. They're bypassing the Enigma. Now they hit the Maskarovka. Again, if they go through this last click, they can save a credit. And they could bypass this. Now with coffee, this is one credit. They could give us, in theory... The two credits, we'd actually kind of like it here. But maybe if they're not running this, they expect us to. And they're not going to be running this if they're flipping their Matryoshka. They know we're going to have money next turn. All right, single access here off the top. Nice. Info Bounty got two. They got the click back as well. So they two clicks left. And this server, again, is kind of hard to run without the uh, Matryoshka flip down. Again, the base Matryoshka is useless. It's how many hosted ones is how much ice they can break. Draw, draw there at the end. All right, we got a road turret and they know it, which means we have a road turret into Mavirus in the near future. We can obviously do advance advance here. Now we can either advance this for more credits or we can just probably just play government subsidy. The other option is to just get some ice somewhere. Uh, in terms of Matryoshka accounts, there's two more in the 16 plus five cards. And once that's down, they can get a single access on HQ. Maybe they're on jailbreak, stuff like that would make sense. Uh, so I don't think we have to hit this once more. We're going to discard a card anyway. So I think we'd rather either government subsidy or push into the remote server. The other option is to get the Rota turret somewhere. Um, the game is more about R&D, so I think that's kind of valuable. They know what this is, and it's more so here we would need the Mavirus. And if, if we hit the Mavirus into the Rota turret, we kind of win the game on the spot. This puts us on 10 credits. We're not likely to spend credits this turn, which means we can easily subsidy the following. Because I don't know if they're going to run R&D for a single. It's hard. They need another Matryoshka. And even with two Matryoshkas, they can't run a 3 ice server. Maybe they get HQ here. That's where the mark is. They would need their final backstitching or the Matryoshka. And with 20 credits, they can, you know, be pretty aggressive if they want to. Let alone the 2 on Chesva. If you don't use it, you lose it. I don't like sayings that rhyme, I'll be honest. Oh, Katurga. Cool. So this means they can bring back some Matryoshkas, let alone, have we seen any multi axis They haven't played a finality or anything. That's really cool. That is the one card that really helps with the recursion issue. Three influences a lot, but you'll do what you have to do. Is they break for free with Chesva? You see some face down cards in here. There's two Maviruses. We want those back at some point. 
viruses are like the most important card in their deck. Um, and we also want to make sure we have a half run. So they return to Matryoshka. That's really cool. Uh, we get two purges here. You don't do anything. You can technically hit no. You used to never want to not be able to purge, but it doesn't change board state. Uh, now you can just for fun purge. So this means they'll have a two stack Matryoshka. Uh, Matryoshka is not the best at running, um, you know, Zato grid, because we can make just three ice. We can do ice wall, then we can Zato them with the end of the run, even on the road of turret, and then they have to come back. Uh, road of turret on the inside, though, is like the worst part of this. So here they could slap down another Matryoshka, but they just can't run this turn. And again, this might be eggs in a basket problem, uh, which they're open to other damage. We have left one hostile, which I don't think we want to score out. It doesn't really get us closer to seven points in any way that matters. So we're going to score out a 4 2 agenda or a 3 2 agenda. We have no fast advance. I'm surprised they didn't play the Zenit or any of their other stuff. Like, there's some good value here. Um, Panweave, less so. Depends how much you're running HQ. But Zenit is almost always playable. Depending if they're running once a turn. Maybe at that point in the game, they weren't running consistently. All right, Ice Wall. That's actually just good enough. Uh, just getting that on server one is probably good enough. Unfortunately, we could do that. Install advance. That will put us on game point. They're on 18 credits. They have to install a Matryoshka. They have to run this Ice Wall. And then we can always pull a Spin Doctor. Yeah, I think we just need to push them into the remote server. Oh, I didn't do any financial check here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we have to only start our turn with one credit. Because with one credit, you can score at Oaktown. Because every credit basically pays you back. Uh, but here they have to figure out how to run their mode service. Three ice. We're assuming inside jobs to some extent. Those are kind of annoying. But we might actually have to Zato a Rota turret for, for fun. Now they can only break three ice here. And in theory, we can produce four ice. It's going to be most of our money. Oh, now they can deal with four ice. But now Zato Ice Wall just does it. So unfortunately, that should be it. All we do here is res a Zato. We'll res an ice wall. Trash this to fire a printed subroutine. You betcha. Spin doctor, new remote, and the run. It just fires the subroutine. They can't break it. It's not like they encounter it. We just trash the ice to fire a subroutine, which with only one click left, again, they had to get all their matryoshkas down. They drew a lot of their matryoshkas. That should be game. But yeah, in theory, it's like in our best interest if they have multiple Matryoshkas and they have more than one click left is that we make them Matryoshka the first ice wall, Matryoshka the second ice wall, and then we uh, Zato on the Roto turret. At that point, though, our credits would have been pretty close. Good game. Beth. Good game. But the Virtuoso pressure was like very real. We just wanted to get ice on everything. Um, the stuff guys was not the best position, but it ended up mattering, which is quite nice. But yeah, this mid-range ice, that's the issue. It's like, our economy is not amazing, and then we can't play some of the bigger ice. Some of the bigger ice is annoying. They had more credits, though. Like, they could have dealt with anything. So it's more about of our unfair tricks and traps. <laughs> Thanks again. All right. Startup. Climbing Tanker. We got some rig destruction. Some instant speed half run virus combo. And we're playing against Lou. Lou is some pretty good pressure. 41 cards. Um, I've talked about this before in Startup, but I think right now in Anarch, you basically to say have to but you really want to be playing endurance i don't know i think the console slot and then trying to get your program suite to work is a bit difficult and unfortunately we're really weak to endurance as a whole uh the one thing we can expect about lou is three copies of imp which means central pressure is just on its own relatively good let alone the lou ability we have a fair few trashables so this hand's like okay um we have a fair bit of ice i think we have like 18 ice so we can mulligan and hopefully get two ice there yeah that's actually a very comparable hand except we have ice for the central servers Anvil early can be rough if they run into it with an imp, so be it. Our remote server, we actually like Enigma a fair bit better. So I'm going to get this on HQ. I'm going to get this on R&D. And I think there's a chance we could consider extracting gear for just three credits. Uh, the other option, of course, is to like transform an ice wall into a spin doctor or something like that. But I don't think we need to. We'll just click for credit. Extract is such a good card in op for obvious reasons. Um, it allows us to get our stuff where we want. The idea is that we can, you know, well, I guess we don't need extract for it, but we can always extract a virus into a regolith, which is, you know, a very good economy early. Let's see what they're playing again. Influence count is pretty hard. There's that imps we expect. If they run into an anvil, the imp comes down, which I love. If they're running into an ice wall. We'll protect that. And luckily we res the anvil for only three credits after it fires. So maybe they'll slam R&D here. Again, there's some fear about respecting some program destruction, Stavka, trashing an imp. That's better than your breakers. We'll see if a cleaver comes down or botulus. Oh, we don't have a magnet in the list because we haven't been running into a lot of botulus. I'm going to do this. I actually really don't like getting bad pub early. It's something I'm so used to, but in a lot of the Wayland decks that I used to play, we're a bit more aggressive that could close the game out a bit sooner. But um, this one feels a bit slower because you kind of have to set up like you're kind of, you're out there trapping, right? You're setting a trap. You're hitting their breakers. It's a bit more plotting. Uh, maybe we should just play this a bit more aggressively. But now the bad pub means Cleaver gets through that ice wall for literally free. Telework. Good economy splashed in. 
Um, we can push out here in the remote server. We can just do Regolith, Enigma, Advance. They are not running into our anvil. Sorry, Regolith, Enigma, Res, Fire it. We don't have to. I think we can draw once here. Okay. So we have the cool combination with Mavirus Enigma where we can pull a half run. So then they lose a click and end the run and then they have to come back through two ice. Like I think if we're going to just try and rush out, that's kind of the thing we want to do. Uh, so we're going to try and do that. And I think that's going to be a better econ play ideally than having to dump a regolith here while they set up. They might run this again. We're OK if they trash this. It also just allows us to purge an imp and then we can get a regolith or a half run, whatever we want. Career fair for the twinning. Uh, Cleaver's coming down. They don't actually have any way to charge the twinning here. It's kind of hard in Anarch how to charge the twinning, but here they're going through for free. Um, unfortunately, the cleaver also does deal with half run for free, so this can be quite bad. We want the above the law or the oak town to survive. We can consider resing them a virus here. We can go get a two cost ice. We have no ice in the deck besides half run, which they break for free. The two cost ice slot in, in startup is really bad. In fact, in, in standard as well. There's a the regolith. Probably want to imp that, which gives them a card and credit. Again, they can just pay three if they want to save the imp counter. And we're okay with that. Yeah, they did. So they paid two basically and got a card. Lose ability, pretty relevant. Tell her for three. Okay, cool. So we got away with it. I definitely think we want to probably um, above the law of the twinning more than anything else. Second, the virus. Keeping that in HQ is just nice because if they hit it, they hit it. So we'll do server two. I didn't plan the rest of the turn. <laughs> so we can res this virus, extract the virus to get a two coster. But again, we have no two cost ice in this deck that will deal with this. Like we want another ice here. We probably could draw here first. I think we do. That's good on HQ. It puts us on nine credits. We only need um, uh, six for this. And if we are above the law and sync the twinning, we're in a good spot. We'll see if they're on prepaid or Chesva because the twinning is kind of hard. All the companions rotated from startup. So it's actually the, the format or it's the faction that is the hardest. Like Chesva's three influence takes a beer MU. Uh, prepaid, I think, is the easy neutral slot to charge the twinning. All right, they're drawing up. Yeah, we definitely should have drawn first there. And pushing the above the law versus the oak town, you know, it gives us, uh, we don't have to start advancing it, let alone they'll see what it is. But like, obviously the Enigma falls apart as soon as they get down um, a buzzsaw. All right, we can res the anvil here if we want to. It forces them to trash one of their installed cards. Um, again, this is something they eventually break for literally free. Like we could always consider trashing the ice wall to go get a spin doctor. Uh, that's not the worst. Uh, this is only a three credit res though, and it goes down to six. I think we can do that. Unfortunately, if we score this out, we're going to be on even less credits. We don't have to trash a card here. This is going to fire. So they'll probably get an imp here, but they have to trash one of their installed cards and all their installed cards are relatively good. So it's their choice what to trash. Uh, the telework for three credits is probably the least important card. Obviously three credits is good, uh, but the cleaver and the imp, the imp is a lot of value potentially, especially on this axis. It's at least a credit and they can control the game. So it's their decision. It's not ours. Oh, the 20 goes down. So actually our above the law is way worse on this board unless they install a resource last click. They probably hit the telework here, but actually keeping the telework down so they can deal with the anvil. Mind you, they trashed a Stavka, which is something that inherently uh, Anarch is actually really hard to deal with. It's really, they struggle to deal with it. You don't see a lot of Noom. Okay, uh, we could let the above the law ride if we really wanted to. We go down to three credits. We cannot res a turret. I think we can consider resing them a virus. Extracting it is not very good. It gets us a two cost. And again, the two cost slot is just like regular if it goes in the remote. So I'm going to advance this out. Oh, sorry. I have to ask them an action. Sorry. Action. In theory, we have to let them to do an action here because they want to pop the no free lunch. They have to do it before we score it. And we'll actually rather trash the no free lunch than telework because this is click list three credits versus a click for three credits. Yeah, as soon as we start using our click, so we spend a click to, to score or to advance the above the law, then we can do as many paid abilities as we want before giving priority back to the runner, which means we can score, which is a paid ability, and then fire it, which we're doing because we score. So they don't have a window to be like, hey, let me pop my no free lunch. But I think I'd much rather trash this, which is three credits click, let's say, as opposed to three credits for a click. Let's let them spend the click. I'm just worried when the buzz slot comes down because so much of our ice is like really, really low strength, and that's very weak against um the Anarch Suite. The only thing we can do unfairly is like uh, the Mavirus thing. Mainly here with three, four credits, they can consider running HQ. Like there's not much we can do to prevent it, right? Like the road turret's on four. And if the road turret fires, we're in a good spot. We'll trash the cleaver. There's a Parisha. Doesn't trash upgrades, trash assets though. And that actually just inherently works really well with Lou. You're trashing stuff. So this is, I think, a really good run. Uh, ideally, they hit the Mavirus. Uh, hitting the Spin Doctor be bad. Extract is fine too. But we're one credit short here. And I think they might respect that considering they know we're on Stavka as there should be no surprises around that. They hit the extract. That's fine. They'll imp that. I reckon. Card. Credit. Good value. 
Lou is the 40 card minimum runner in startup. So like the consistency and its ability, like the ability doesn't fire every turn. Um, like kind of how she go used to in older startup, but it's not bad at, by any means. Ooh, Scrubber and Prisha, they really do not like assets. Okay, I think we can spin Doctor here. We're going to need money though. Um, what kind of economy can we draw into? There's actually not a lot that we can draw into. We have uh, two more extracts. We can't play hedge funds. We might just have to click three, which is like obviously really ugly. Uh, if we need seven credits to ensure the road turret connects, which uh, trashing a cleaver is good. They probably have two in their list. Um, otherwise, we can do install advance advance. It puts us on uh, five. Five is not enough for us to do anything really cool. We need six for that. So we might just click for three here. Spin Doctor in the remote is like also kind of ugly. Not the worst. It's not the worst. This might force a run. If we connect with Enigma though and go down to two credits, at least it might cost them a click. Yeah, our money's not great. I think a big part of me and probably a big part of everyone forgets that this thing does net damage. And I worry that there's probably some games that we've already recorded in which the net damage of the Mavirus might have been relevant. But again, nobody remembers it. And we always fire this like pretty early on. And the appreciate install is also kind of good because it's just something they can feed to the anvil if they want to go through it. We like the credits. And again, it's just a single axis. That's a big thing about Startup Anarch. It's like their multi axis is almost entirely finality. Immediately, we did see a twinning, but it's a bit harder to play in the format, I think. But yeah, it'll just be finalities at some point. There's a buzzsaw. That's a nightmare. So now the whole game is about can we trash stuff here? And actually, hitting the, the Mavirus here is a bit ugly too. So I'm not going to res the Enigma. So this, we can res the Mavirus. We can go get a two coster. If they trash it, they get a card and a credit. I don't think we want to pay three for this. We can go get like a regolith and put it somewhere else, but I don't think that's worth doing. Oh, that's an ugly hand. Okay, well, do we trash this to get a two coster? It's just half run. And obviously we don't want a half run. They make it for one credit, no matter which way they slice it. So they're going to just trash the Freema virus, which actually feels really bad. That feels really quite bad because they get money off of it. We'll put the regolith back in. Actually, I think we'll put the Stavka extract. We just need burst money. Purge doesn't do anything. But they trash it, they get a card and credit. It's really good. Like, that was not a big run for them, right? They actually gained more value off of that run. They spent a click to get a card of credit and, like, suss out a spin doctor. That being said here, with four credits, like, they, that was a bit risky. That could have been a Stavka, right? And if that was a Stavka, we would have blown out two of their breakers. So they are taking risks here. Um, and maybe they're respecting HQ, but yeah, that easily could have been a Stavka. Even a Ballista, which at least would only trash one thing and not end the run. Not that Stavka does. Economy in shambles. Breakers are out. If we can't trash the breakers, I don't think we have a game here. But I think it's totally doable. All we have to do is wait for them to run HQ, and we have to get them a virus behind here and seven credits. So as soon as next turn, we have a threat where we can just do half run rotor turret. It would be only weak to endurance, which we haven't seen enough influence to say that they're not on endurance. We've only seen three, four so far. And I do think, again, a lot of the loot decks should probably be on two endurance. Liberty coming down. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to sprint here. The uh, hedge fund would be nice. We got it. We also have a Stavka, which is really nice for their mode server. So I'm gonna get rid of the two agendas, putting them in R&D behind the anvil. Like it's hard for them to run through this consistently. They probably can. Uh, we also are gonna put the staff card with the Zato. So I'll get rid of at least one agenda. And I think we'll get rid of the extract. So we'll do that. We'll get this on HQ. They could consider pinhole threading it, but if they ever run into the road turret with virus, we have it. And also technically means that we have Stavka half run on this server in the next turn, which is good. Uh, pinhole threading though, I'm pretty sure they're on considering they're on no free lunch. So they seem to just have, you know, the tech. Our imp is down. That's sort of the issue here is if we want a virus to clear the imp, uh, we're going to lose our, our rotator tech. Oh, this is sick. Okay, so this is such a big blowout. So what do we want to trash? I think it's either the barrier or the code gate. I think we want to do the barrier. So let's res this. It's a rotator. All right, so we can trash that card here. Um, the buzzsaw threatens these two servers. Uh, we can maybe do the fractor. Buzzsaw is actually better against our deck. So we only have two anvils and two enigmas, I think, in the list. Uh, we have a fair bit of barriers. I'll do the barrier. Admittedly, R&D is open, and I think at this point, like, the thing is, like, they don't really ever have to break this, and they're never sure whether they need this. I think the upside for breaking the buzzsaw is that Enigma's on their mode server, but ideally, we do, like, install, install, hit this once. And again, we still have a virus. They might go R&D here. Again, for this, we don't need to put down the Zato. We just need to make sure we have seven credits again, and we can wipe two of the breakers. Steel skin to draw three. Back to us. All right, we have an extract if we want to. We could always like trash the ice wall to go to zero cost. Right? I don't think we really need to do that. So if we put this on the remote server, it'll be on four. We install this. We res it. We'll be on five. That is not enough, but they also don't have a stop key yet. So I think we can take that trade. We can also just extract for credits or we can res this to gain a credit. I'm really worried that if we res this to gain a credit, like they're just going to pinhole it. This is it's a bit of a risky line. I don't know. I generally try and play a bit safer than this, but I think we've been playing a bit too slow. 
and just forcing him to have to interact with us on every turn or like consider doing it is probably for the better. We haven't seen a lot of card draw. It's just been steel skin so far in their ability. We haven't seen earth rise. Um, so maybe they're struggling to get the breakers together again in faction. There's no into the depths. There's no mutual favor. So if they want to get consistency, oh, hush, that's so good. That is so good. Jailbreak, good multi axes and a bit of card draw. So they can just break this for one. The text is blank because of hush, which just blanks text. So this is free with bad pub and they're going to see two cards and they still have imp. We can't really afford to fund purge imp. Ooh, Parisha trashing spin doctor free and imping a hedge fund would love to draw into either of those cards. That's pretty good disruption. It's two hedge funds out. But at least we'll get a regolith here. And we're going to need another piece of ice up here. At least we're drawing into an unknown card. So we could technically like take um, six off of this. In theory, take four off of this and then ice up R&D. Their MU is full too. So like I really think they're on endurance. And as soon as endurance is down, the game is in totally, totally, like, totally a different game. Where like our Stavka half run stuff doesn't really work anymore. And that's kind of the issue is like I feel like you're so incentivized in startup when playing Anarch to play endurance. Because your console slot, like I don't know if you want to play Carnivore. You generally don't have the card draw to support it that easily. You'd have to like maybe play Zenit or something that really gives you card draw while running. Dreamnet's no longer legal in the format. And Endurance just helps all the downsides where your breakers need a lot of support. K2CB, Turbine, Leech, or, or Ice Carver. All right, that doesn't do much. Um, we know the top, actually the top of R&D is unknown because they trashed through. So they could go and imp it for bad pub. Um, I feel like that's fine. We just need to take money here. They could also like pinhole this and then just trash it for one credit with Regolith, draw card, actually for free with bad pub, right? And then next turn, we'll do this and this and probably hit it once. We might not even Zato. We might not Zato. Yeah, maybe we should have trashed the buzzsaw here. Considering we had two co gates on table and only one barrier. And this was already protecting HQ. Yeah, I feel like we probably should just trash the buzzsaw. It's the more expensive one too, anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> That's okay. Endurance will be the great equalizer. It won't matter what we trashed, right? So they've gone through half their deck. They're on 41 cards. Uh, so have we. Well, we've gone through 20 cards. Thinking, hey, no worries. All right, we're going in. This is a new card. They have the imp. They have the bad pub. Again, we can always use them a virus, but I want to trick them into the rotor turret. Uh, we can't do that. It's blank. Hush is not automated on Jinteki.net. It's bad pub. Good access here. Still a lot of agendas in the game, and they can go back, right? Like the imp is multi access. They trash and extract oh, all their econ. Um, so they can go back and see a new card, let alone they drew a card off of that and got a credit. Like that's so good. Uh, that's the second imp. Again, they might be on Retrieval Run and Katurga. I think those are reasonable cards in this ID um, because the imps are so valuable. Just actually installing another imp, they were full on MU. Two, three, four, yeah, so they had to trash something. They can just go back if they want. It's probably not the best to do. Again, you want to use your Lou ability once per turn, but installing this and not using it is a bit risky because we could just purge it. Uh, should we just purge here? I don't think we need to. I think there's another ice here. And again, if they see ice, they're going to imp it. But at least they're not getting the Lou value. Access card again, they can imp it. Even if it's an agenda, they can imp it. But they're deciding not to. Which means next turn we can always purge it, especially if also they got a breaker down, they want to run HQ. That's the ideal situation is we res them a virus, use them a virus, trash the imp, and then get some value. So they saw an ice wall off the top, right? Why wouldn't they have trashed that? So here we want the ice wall in R&D, so they probably have a cleaver in hand. We can extract this, but then we can't advance this. So I think we just go a bit slower. So we'll put this on R&D so it forces the issue. I do think it's worth keeping the hush on top of the anvil because at some point we're probably going to trash the buzzsaw, so this is relevant. Uh, and then we can either, we can use the regolith to get another ice wall out of the deck. there will be a last one coster. I'm um, stacking the ice walls. It's like not amazing. The other option is we can extract this. We're going to take this once at least. So we can either extract this. It gets a card out of HQ, which is fine. Uh, we can get an ice wall out of the deck. That's fine too. We'll put the ice wall in their mode server because we have um, this. What's it called? Uh, Zato. Cool. That also saves install costs. Uh, they, did, they didn't know the top of the deck anymore. Well, they didn't there, so I don't mind shuffling it as well. But next turn, we do install and install advance. And then the problem there is we have to hope R&D holds off, so they might just be able to tunnel us here. Like, a single finality has a huge impact on the game, considering there's only one more spin doctor, so, and our sprint is out. So the ability to shuffle the game and break a uh, meaningful R&D lock is going to be quite hard. But here they didn't imp this, so they're going to need to produce a cleaver. And there's a chance it's just in, like, the bottom five cards. Okay, so top of R&D is unknown. HQ is hard to run. They're going to need two ways to deal with the Roto turret if they want to be really safe. Uh, Stavka half run is live and well. There's a retrieval run. Interesting to see what they get here. I reckon it might just be an imp, but they're going to have to trash something here. Oh, Cleaver's coming back, but of course. So now their MU is messed up, uh, but now they can run R&D. It's going to at least cost them a credit. Uh, but there is the program recursion that does exist in the format. We'll res it for one, of course. Uh, we can always like extract an ice wall to go get a, a spin doctor. That's actually one way that we could have broken potential R&D lock. But we're just hoping to draw a Stavka or like a Roto Turret for R&D. The problem is like 
they're just going to trash everything. Now they're only going for singles. It's it's relatively cheap, mind you. They're getting actually uh, it's it's card neutral on this. They imp to subsidy. That's okay. We didn't want to draw that, but they let them see deeper if they want to go back for a click here. Uh, going back is interesting, right? Like this allows us to draw into an ice, and I think actually allowing us to draw government subsidy was better than allowing us to draw like a sentry here. And that's the kind of thing the thing they're worried about is getting locked out of R and D. And mainly they wouldn't got their loo ability, but you know there are some downsides to to trashing stuff. Um, I think the Alice is actually kind of okay. We don't need money. So we'll just do server two install advance. Uh, the Alice is more important for us. It allows us to break lock and get like a rotor turret on R and D. And mind you, just the some virus means that if they ever hit a rotor turret or Stavka, we can just say, no, sorry. And I think Stavka is the best case because we can just trash both their breakers. And they played one retrieval run. We haven't seen any other copies. So they might be holding other copies, you know, keeping them close. Admittedly, ooh, scrubber. Uh, admittedly, you, they probably would have played a cleaver. All right. So we're going to be able to kick flip here. We start here with the ice wall. That's free with bad pub. So now we have to do our trick here. So we can do res. We want to res them a virus. We want to res the Stavka. We do not need to make the Stavka seven strength. So here we're going to do the big thing our deck can do. We don't need to make this five strength. We're going to res. We actually don't need to res this. Yeah, we don't need it. They just, yeah, Stavka is just good enough. <laughs> so, so keen to do the cool combo. But then like, yeah, Stavka just trashes two things and they have no way to break this. So that means that Enigma will connect, which is really good. So they lose both their breakers. One that just came back. That is an ouch for sure. It's kind of on them to keep going. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard hit. But again, I think it's really hard in the format to deal with a seven strength uh, sentry. Like Mimic doesn't do it. So you have to end up playing like Noom or uh, probably Endurance, right? Now the Enigma would have got a click away from them. If they ever come back to the Stavka, we still have the Mavirus, but now every single server is locked out. And it seems like they're at next cleaver if they're on two. And I'm assuming they are considering the inconsistency of Anarchs. They probably don't have it in hand considering the retrieval run. And then once we get the Alice down, we are on game point and we just have to push out the Oaktown. We could even consider not getting the token here. The problem is though, like if we install the Oaktown, it's going to be two turns anyways. So I think we probably just go for the Alice token. No free lunch. Cool. Okay. So the Atlas token here, it's fine. It means that we can always break lock if we need to, but next turn we just jam in the Oaktown, install advance, advance. Um, and then we have Zato to end the wall and when they go through it, even from the Enigma, and then they have to go back through this multiple times, let alone we'll do Mavirus and then half run and all that nonsense. So they really need to land a finality here because they have to get a lot of accesses in two turns, let alone obviously camping the remote might be difficult. Cleaver's back though. So you can always just go through R&D. We're going to force the issue. So we definitely do install advance here. The question is whether we end up extracting something, right? Like we always can extract the anvil to get, uh, what's it called? Just an enigma, and I think that's actually worth it. I think the enigma is better positioned than the anvil, which doesn't actually stop them. They can finality through it. So we'll just go get enigma, let alone a bunch of credits. We don't want the Maskarovka. So we'll put that on R&D, get six credits, and we're in an okay spot. So we'll see if they can produce a killer here. But again, we haven't seen their console, and I do think they might be on endurance, and that's the one thing that's going to surprise us here. And luckily, we do have the half run of virus for that. But hey, this is the issue sometimes with Anarchs, where if you can't find your breakers, and mind you, they spent a lot of time going for single axes. Those single axes has pushed them forward. They weren't the worst, right? Like you have Imp, you have the Lou ability. Uh, but if you need, know you need your breakers um, to be able to deal with Stavka or your endurance, you have to go find it. I think they're on endurance. I don't think we've seen enough influence, let alone we haven't seen a console. So they know in the remote server, this has to be it. Now, if they run, we can zap to them twice. So they can't just run this. They need a trick or they have to win off a central server. There's a buzzsaw. It's unfortunately jailbreak. We're going R&D here. We actually have a kickflip here just to be rude. Again, seeing two cards doesn't do it. We're going to go for the purge. We're going to get a half run. Can't get a century breaker. We'll put that on R&D. Trash a card. Trash the non-agenda. They cannot use the decoder. And now they hit the buzzsaw. So we just did our kickflip that we're holding in our pocket for the whole game. Unfortunately, no killer means that this is going to fire. We could have done it on the ice wall too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was waiting, waiting in the wings for all the uh, sentries. GG. All right, let's just score this out. There was some points on top. Again, with two X's, they can't win, but we'll do it. And that is the end. Hey, GG. We didn't see that much influence. Like we saw just small pieces of influence. We didn't see any like big spicy chunks. Uh, there's a chance maybe they're on Chesva considering we're on K2CP Turbine. Those are also like big spends. But yeah, our ice suite, like everything on the table gets broken for literally straight pennies if they can get their rigs up. So it's so much about like, you know, the unfair um, a virus half run type stuff or program destruction at the right time. Thanks for the game, eh? All right, let's get another one in. All right, XCam here. 
back from a CO today. They did relatively well, got their top eight seamlesses. And I reckon they're playing something competitive. So I do think this has a big chance of being Deer's published uh, uh, Rene Egalite Liberté deck, which is an endurance list, which is something inherently we're actually pretty weak against. Uh, program destruction, rig destruction is very difficult to interact with um, endurance. So this might be a bit of a struggle. And then all our ice gets broken for pennies. So we have to be really aggressive. Our opening hand, the Maviruses are nice. Three imp is kind of what you're expecting, let alone fermenters and some amount of botulises. Do we want to score out behind a single ice wall? It loses to botulis, it loses to endurance, it loses to like rip cleaver. Admittedly, there's only two in the list. Uh, I'm going to mulligan that. Uh, this is a bit better. We can start with the hostile, which like giving bad pub to the fixed strength breaker suite is, you know, not the best because they break everything now incredibly cheaply as opposed to very, very cheaply. All right, and we're off. We have a Kimberlite in hand. That is a way that we can trash their breakers. It's very difficult for us to trash an endurance. You're going to have to really sink your own, um, I guess, a toll booth or something like that. And we, of course, we did have a version of this that had Ancel in it. And that's one of the only unfair ways, as much as people don't let Zato happen. Uh, you could maybe kind of get a situation where they're running last click. Imp, open HQ. That's kind of what's ha going to happen. I don't want to put Ferris on HQ. We can just let these go through. Imp, hedge funds, still great. Dirty laundry, card draw credit. Um, but yeah, Lou is quite good. There's a fermenter. Again, we have three viruses in the list, so this is a bit like I don't know. I'm gonna do this. I don't feel great about it. This guts our economy. Admittedly, we do have economy in hand, but they're getting good value here from running HQ. Now if they face tank into this, so we go down to two credits. So be it hedge fund. Uh also this Kimberly feel is really bad. It doesn't actually trash anything because we don't have anything. Matryoshka, okay, this is actually interesting because they still might be on endurance, but this is actually something we're a bit better at dealing with. Now, if they run here with four credits or five credits, uh, they will end up with a tag, which we can't actually deal with that. So we might have been a bit aggressive. I wasn't expecting double Matryoshka, let alone any Matryoshka. So here with the bad pub, it's three for strength, two for subroutine. So they can break all the end runs, but they'll end with a tag here. With three cards in hand, I don't think that's a risk you can easily take. That being said, we let HQ open with Imp, so they might have been dissembling our combo, not that we saw it. They just got hit two hedge funds, dang. Uh, so it's kind of up to them. They can either end their turn with a tag and get in or not. And even with two credits, we can't actually score out this Kimberlite field. Again, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't have done this. Because going down to low credits is kind of hard. Uh, funny enough, we want to trash our Matriosh because we have to sink the Pharos, which honestly might be worth it. I honestly think it might be worth sinking the Pharos. Uh, admittedly, it'll be in a turn from now, not this turn. All right, Magic Strength. Let's see if they break two subs or one sub. It's either the tag or both end their ends. All right, they're breaking the tag. Fantastic. So we made them spend some good money that turn, which is nice. Essentials are wide open. We can do credit, extract, and put this on. Uh, we're not going to trash anything. That's the best we got. They can empty us out, uh, but we're going to have to try and score this thing out. I ideally, we don't trash the Pharaohs. Uh, their imp is empty, so they can always run HQ here. With only one credit and one bad pub, they might not be able to trash something. Uh, the Fermenter, though, they can crack to get back up to credits. But program destruction is super important. We just want to make sure we get a three cost res so we can trash this. So I don't think we have to rush out the Kimberlite field at all. We're also still risking. They did make a successful run. So like public trail into something. But again, if we had that, we probably would have iced up HQ against Imp. So let's hit him a virus here. That'd be so good. One credit, no trash, no steal. There's two credits with bad pub. Now they're on three. And it was actually a regolith, which pushing this into remote server and just getting money off of it is like just good enough. They know what this is. Now, when they go ahead and trash this, they only end up spending one credit because they get a card and they have bad publicity and the credit back from Lou. So it's not amazing, but it's like it's kind of what we need right now is just money. We could draw, but then we draw into agendas. We don't really have much to do about them. Fermenter, cracked, are on 10 credits. There's a DZ. There's some Chesva. So they're definitely on 20 gear. This is good for central servers. Again, we saw a lot of like Lou decks playing um, uh, Parisha or playing the, what's it called? Um, Scrubber. And this is actually kind of a similar idea if you're just trashing cards from centrals to draw and gain credits. Kimberlade off the top. All right. Unfortunately, we, we need to get something res that's bigger than, um, you know, four credits. Let's draw once. Thanks. Let's draw again. I think we'll res the Zato to trash it. So I think we can do that maybe next turn. We'll just get this on HQ. Three trashables and an agenda in there. You can't leave really, really this open. This is a sloppy game. Like this is, this is a rough game right now. We pushed out a bit aggressively and we're getting punished for it. And I think Lou's actually really good at the aggression. Pinhole threading. Uh, they can see what the Kimberlite is. They can also just trash the regolith if they wanted to, but they could have just ran that. Uh, admittedly here, they get to use the Chesba, but they see it's a Kimberlite field. So they probably don't want to like continue to uh, boost into the Matryoshka. All right, Zato, they didn't see what we top decked, which is nice. We can empty this to go get a one coster. It'd be a resed ice wall, which we can put on a central server. I think that's worth doing. Uh, I think we do have to put this here, though. It just is safe. They have more pinhole threadings. At that point, we're not going to get the, um, what's it called? The uh, ice wall. 
And one of the cool things about Op, while this only has three credits on it, it's probably still worth trashing to some extent because this is not only three credits, it's also an instant install res uh, ice wall or any one coster from our deck. So yeah, that's actually really interesting that this is worth always trashing, even if it's low. And that being said, Lou does it relatively well, let alone with bad publicity. So I think paying a credit here is fine. Seeing the top of R&D, bad pub as well. Nothing there. We're getting pretty lucky. There's a lot of trashables, no free lunch. Um, so I do think we're going to just sink the Matryoshka. Ooh, Roto Turret off the top. I think we just still sink it. I think we have to res this. We'll do advance, 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 score. We will trash a three coster. So we'll install a two coster. Um, it'll be a regolith in server two. We don't need to. Actually, it gets it out of their deck though, but we definitely don't want to pull a half run. We'll put that into server two and then we'll trash the two stack Matryoshka. R&D still wide open. We definitely want the Roto Turret on there. And they know we have this. So it might change how they run. But two Matryoshkas are down. Retrieval Run, Katorga are two really good recursion cards. Um, at least they're okay. And they're in both an Anarch. So it's a bit safer to play Matryoshka. Yeah, trash game. The Matryoshka. And there's so many more Matryoshkas right now in startup than there were maybe two, three weeks ago. I think the deck list of the week really encouraged people to try this out. Maybe people are already playing it. There's a Carnivore. So they're not Endurance. That's sick. But now they can trade two cards for one card off of R&D. And this is technically multi-axis, right? Like they can see deeper, let alone they don't have to fire it. They still above the law. They're halfway there. Again, we still have a Zato Atlas and they need to figure out how to get through. Ooh, that's not good. They're going back. Help. They're on game point. We can't take risks anymore. Like we can't just trade an agenda away. Sprint is nice. We have an ice wall. They might be on actual breakers like Cleaver and Botches and all that sort of stuff. We haven't seen it. Uh, we still have three, what's it called? Uh, Maviruses in there, which would be pretty good. So we have to figure out what our turn is. This gets us an ice wall. I think Ice Wall, so our remote server is going to be Ice Wall, Stavka, Pharos, Zato. That's really good. So we have to figure out how to get out of this. Um, Roto Turret's nice. They haven't got a lot of Chesla value, unfortunately, but we have to keep them out of central servers. So we can do Roto Turret on R&D. We can push this in the remote server with the Zato. That's going to be our whole turn. Uh, that's actually pretty good. On six credits, they have to break Stavka, Pharos, and then we can still Zato them. And then we can Zato... The Pharos becomes nothing, unfortunately. <laughs> it's just the biggest ice in our deck. And then this can, if they can break through it, we can just, you know, Zato it, trash programs. They hit the Pharos, and then we can go get an Enigma. Uh, so I think that's actually just worth pushing out. Fortunately, we got no value from the Regolith, but we have to ice up R&D as well. So it's either with an Ice Wall or with a Roto Turret, and I think we'd rather just do the Ice Wall for now. We can get an Advancement on this, like a counter, and that actually might be worth it. Uh, considering that then we can just grab the agenda off of R&D. We have a sprint though, so we can break R&D lock. Oh, botulist, that's a problem. At least they only go through it once a turn. Uh, they're probably drawing for a finality because finality makes so much sense with Matryoshka. All right, uh, we got to figure out what to do here. Um, I think we can advance this once. We can get some money down. We definitely want to ice up R&D. I don't know if I actually want to trash the botulist. I don't know why we would trash it. It gets it into the bin, which means they could always retrieval run it. I'd rather it be a bit more difficult to do that. Let's sprint. Okay, two goes back. We have the Mavirus, which is really good. I think we'll just put this on R&D and then we'll just advance this once. 11 credits will be on 10. Uh, again, for this, we're going to need about seven. It puts us on three. We can score this out. Money won't be good, though. <laughs> Second Votulus. Okay, so here we're really incentivized to uh, get the Mavirus down. So we have the Reza Roto here. They're still not contesting the remote server. Uh, the Roto has two relevant subroutines, though, so it's either this gets trashed or they end the run. So. All right, so they're bringing the trash program subroutine, and they have one click left here. Uh, so we're definitely going to want to get our Mavirus there, because if they ever place planet to the Roto Turret. So if that's the case, we have to score this Alice out without a counter. That'll drop us down to five. This will drop us down to less than that. But I think we have to do that, because we lose this single finality so easily. So I think we're just going to protect R&D at all costs. So just with nothing on it. And now here, they need to wait till the Roto Turret gets two counters. But we have a Mavirus in here. That also might incentivize a run. We also have to remember we can use the Mavirus not only to purge, but to pull a half run. But like we're probably going to have to get the Regolith in the table and just empty that a bit unless we draw like an Oaktown renovation. And then I think we'll very barely have credits to get out. Yeah, I think Oaktown would be our best top deck. And we have three in the list still. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's only um, five agendas and 26 cards. So it's one in five. I do think just like, you know, a nice uh, cheeky finality will get them there. HQ, definitely want to res that ice wall. Just to keep them out, again, just Carnivore means they can, uh, it's not card advantage, but it's also card cycling. And that's like an important thing. As much as people don't play Abisu, specifically in Anarch, like the ability on Carnivore is not the worst. Just like trading two cards for one other card, again, it's not an advantage, but it's not the worst. This gets a bit awkward because we have um, a virus. 
oh, beans. We don't have money for this. We just don't have enough money for this. So I think we have to empty this. Because we can install this and then just hope they don't run it. Uh, to be really sure that they can't get in there, we're going to need seven credits. So I think we have to do this, unfortunately. It's just like really quite slow. Uh, they, in theory, have access to, um, what's it called? Uh, to pinhole. But I'm hoping this turn that we end up with virusing. And then they hit the rotor turret. Uh, is it credits or cards? I think they can definitely get credits. Cards means they'll draw into multi-axis. Credits are actually not very usable on this board state. They haven't shown real breakers besides Matryoshka. And with the um, Mavirus, we can not exactly blow it out. It's actually really interesting. If they run into like with the Matryoshka into the Rota turret for safety, then we can purge with this and also get out um, what's it called? A half run. And that forces us to fire. But like next turn, we could consider installing the Atlas, hitting this twice first. I think that's a possibility. Okay, twinning. So they're definitely going to go central servers. Uh, hold on. So thinking. Hmm. So here we can purge with the Mavirus. We can get a two coster from our deck. It would only be the half run. The purge slows down the fermenter and it makes this botulist fire. What are we trashing? We're probably trashing this botulist. And just getting the half run actually is worth it. It gets a two coster out of our deck, but it's an end the run on server two. All right. And now they hit this. Fire all. So we are going to trash the botulist. Immediately, they could install something else to get through this, like Matryoshkas. And again, we still lose just the finality. There's no way around it. Um, I think it's harder for them to break two subroutines than it is to break the ice wall. Uh, okay, so what can we do here? So we can install the Alice here on the server. We can hit this once. That'll put us on seven credits. And then we can put a Maskarovka here. I think that's the best we have. The other option is that we hit this twice. Now, putting the Maskarovka here, we'll trash the ice wall, I reckon. Um, so that will put us on six credits. That means we can't arrest Stavka Zato, but they have to deal with the half run and then they have to deal with the Pharos and the whole time we have Zatos. Uh, the Zato with the half run means we can go get an ice wall from our deck, so they have to come back. I think we're safe with that. I think we're actually relatively safe. So I'm just going to try not to lose the finality. So we'll put this on R&D for one and we'll put this in server two. We only have six credits, which is one shorter than we want it to be, uh, but we can res the Maskarovka and still the Zato. So we have some options here. Draw, draw. Matryoshka is coming down. I think that's fine for us. And sure, Gamble. That should have it. Whoa, that was an aggressive game. We went a bit hard in the mode server, but that should be seven right there. Good game. Wow. I really thought they'd be an endurance, which again helps a heck of a lot. Um, but yeah, we traded some really good blows. Only 14 minutes for that game, but some, some good decisions, I think. So yeah, so they had finality. They're digging for it when they're on six points. Um, obviously, like getting rid of the Matryoshka is the most important thing. Uh, but the finality would just wins the game. Like they see four off the top. It's yep. Yeah, well, there's a hostile. Obviously, result oriented. Uh, Sing four though is like very likely for them to close the game at. Thanks to the game, eh? All right, let's do another one. All right, we're playing against you. Got Ken. Uh, is Ken going to be on endurance? Honestly, maybe. I think there's a big chance. Uh, we're going to play around three inside job. You're going to see leg works, jailbreak stuff like that. Uh, this opening is not very great. We'll see. Maybe on endurance again. Swift rotated out of startup, so um, the console slots either you know penny shaver or virtual. So I think both of those make a fair bit of sense. But one run event a turn. Uh, I think you're gonna see the twinning. I would just like to record to show that Andre is picking up sick kids. Uh, she was not feeling very good right now. She's a bit under the weather. Are right, you gonna mulligan this? We want to ice up both centrals with just like relatively okay and the run ice. Uh, if there's just criminal breakers, we can end up trashing them with um, a virus into the half run thing. And this is good enough. We generally want to be able to ice up everything. Now, this might put us a bit further away from what's it called? Government subsidy. That's kind of be the hill that we're going to focus on for the next couple turns. All right. Penny Shaver just smash slamming it. I'd love to get the uh, Enigma on somewhere else. Yellow slam. You get the credit off the jailbreak, but sometimes you just got to fire it. Okay, cool. So we have a virus here. We can put that there and always like. Go at instant speed to pull, what's it called, a half run, if we really want to. It's a bit expensive. We can also crack this at instant speed to go get a regolith and clear that. I think that's probably what we want to do. So I'm just going to put that on HQ as a pseudo chrysium and then crack that maybe next turn. If we top deck and extract, it's even better. And then we can get a regolith down. Drawing up, again, this engine, we need to make sure that she's not making cheap runs. Maskarovka for one credit, it's just a nice wall. But I'm assuming on Cleaver, you don't see a lot of uh, criminals just playing... Um, Marjana, but maybe if you're running constantly, you can do it. So I'm thinking we're going to do the spin doctor just because if we get the regolith on the table, how much will it be? It'll be basically, it'll take us down to one credit and then we can take a nine off of it. So it'll be a credit play and then Shu has to trash it. I don't think there's a reason not to do the spin doctor. We can always do that play next turn. We have Roto Turret on the innermost. That's generally pretty good. The problem though is if we put the spin doctor with the Roto Turret, that means if we're going to use them a virus to go get something, uh, we have to trash. Um, what's it called? The spin. And it, 
I think if if Shu trashes the Spin Doctor, we're totally fine. So Inter Dobbs is the one thing we're worried about. Again, this like bluff that this is a Chrisium Grid makes it so that Shu might not want to like play a run event here. Dirty Laundry gives you the Penny Shaver, let alone the credit once per turn for a run event with 10. And there's a car in. So the Roto Turret, we're going to have to basically get uh, with a half run, which means we're going to need two ice on this first. And then we're going to need more credits off of the Mavirus. And I don't think we have to be precious about the Mavirus considering our economy. So we'll res, we'll purge, two cost, regolith, server two, smash that, smash that like button. Uh, we'll just do it twice and then we can put this on here. Sorry, we're expecting pinhole threading. This makes this a bit harder to run. And the fact that we haven't filtered HQ means like anything that comes down, uh, you know, like the cat's cradle, you might get a like work that it's going to pay out pretty, pretty well. You see four cards. Let me trash all the Mavirus, which we're not happy about that. There's actually a chance here that the Zato is worse. Actually, I do regret that. I think the Mavirus should be here, not the Zato, because then we have Rota Turret half run. And that's honestly, it's better against Inside Job to have the Zato. I think we just sink the Carmen, right? I think we do just sink Carmen. So Penny, this is really cool to see. Bravado, when the run ends, draw one card for each host power counter, gain three credits. Whenever a subroutine resolves. So you probably don't want the subroutines to resolve. This is where I wish we had a Mavirus. Because the Mavirus into half run is like a fair bit cheaper than throwing a Roto Turret into the ocean. Uh, but that being said, I think we do do this here. I think just trashing a breaker is really important. As expensive as this is, we have more regulus waiting, let alone we have the Spin Doctor. So we will res, res, continue encounter. We'll just Zato. We'll just trash. Okay. Three costs from the deck? Yeah, sure. Doesn't really matter where we put it. We can build a new remote server. Uh, protecting this is fine. And we'll put it on server two. And we'll trash this. Still through. One server team resolved. So that's going to be draw one card, gain three credits. And there's still a fair bit of trashing you want to do here, right? Like that's six credits worth of trashables. Zato, you could leave considering pinhole threading. A lot of times you want to win off central servers, but we'll take that trade. Three credits came back from the raindrops after that. That's a nice run event. It is three influence, which is a fair bit. Bravado is not in the format. This is the closest card to that. That allows you to like face check kind of uh, while also pushing yourself forward. But no breakers on the table. Not that we have economy though. So who's winning now? It's probably not us. So what do we want to do? We want to just get this. I think we can draw once with spin. Uh, I think we can consider extracting the spin if we get it. We just need more money for that. So I think we just click for three. I don't think we want to discard a card. We can put this on HQ. It looks like we're bluffing a Chrisium again. And again, we can crack this to go get a Regolith next turn. That's totally fine. Seemed good the first time. Zanid's down. Losing a Cat's Cradle, that's huge. Again, there might only be two in the deck. This is a Penny Shaver and a card draw. But yeah, not a lot of recursion often in these criminal lists. We might see a single Katurga. Uh, but if that's the coder and there's a code gate on HQ, I think there was a hope there that Zanid just missed. Oh, never mind. Two Cat's Cradle, we're good. All right, so HQ is a problem. So you can get in. Ice Wall can fix that. So we just need to get our money up. We're struggling to get our money up, but we can do it. We have to probably put this on HQ because there's definitely HQ based run events that are going to crop up in hand, let alone the Dawkins Pass. So this on HQ is good. It's also, I think, a matter of time, maybe until we see a sneak door. Um, the other option is to put the Stavka on HQ, which is relatively good, but a bit expensive. And I think we can just click two here. It's a bit ugly. The other option is to do the Mavirus play, but I think we want to do that with a full turn left. And luckily, we've rezzed a lot of code gates already. So the text on the Cat's Cradle is going to be less relevant than maybe in some other matches. Running archives again, it's a credit on the penny shaver and a card draw. It's just efficient, better than doing any of those things. Admittedly, you're going to hit the penny shaver at some point as much as you don't get the money up front. It's right there even. So we'll see. If we can trash this cat's cradle, that might be the only decoder. There is a tremolo. Makes sense. That's a fractor. No influence on that. And we're currently on one cybernetic. So you break ice wall for two credits. I do think we want to crack them a virus for money. I think we just need money. I like that clicklessly. Oh, we can install something here. Again, I think we're gonna get pressured on HQ. We can just throw out a Kimberlite field and keep one agenda in HQ. I think that's fine too. I think we just need money because we ideally want a government subsidy next turn. Let's throw out one of the agendas. So now the spin doctor actually is gonna be threatened. So we'll see here running through this. If we want to go last click, that's two to break this, three to trash that. That is a fair bit of money. Running here, of course, we forgot about this. That does pressure the spin doctor for free, which is not great. And I think we're gonna go get a Mavirus back in. Just kind of a flexible card. We haven't drawn any our half runs yet, so it. Still has a pretty good shelf life. Purge. Keeps uh, Shu honest. It's hard to do for mentor run archives. Just kind of pushes you back. Mutual favor though. We're going to see a killer here. I reckon that's the second Carmen. So probably two of each breaker. So this is the last catch cradle. This is the last Carmen. If we can just like, you know, kickflip stuff come a virus, we're in a good spot. 
Carmen, mind you, coming down for three because of the successful run. And I don't think we're going to see endurance, which obviously counts your blessings. Okay. So Zato on the remote is bad. I think there might be Maker's Eyes or stuff in hand. So we can always do Stavka, Mavirus, get the Mavirus wherever we want it to be. Ideally, we want it behind the killer uh, or the sentry. Alternately, we could do install Kimberlite Field. It's not very good. It's not very good, is it? <laughs> I think we can push them to the remote server. I think we want Stavka on R&D. I think R&D is where we're going to be weak this turn. And then we have this Stavka for the remote server. Sorry, we have Zato for the remote server. So I do think we're going to see some HQ pressure here. We might get a bit flushed out. Um, if it's a legwork, like we can always consider popping the Mavirus to like half run the ice wall, but with actually a barrier, a uh, fractor and a decoder doesn't do much. So this is interesting. And I'm not going to play this. Obviously we could have done that before installing, but I'm assuming that she was going to run HQ and I'm assuming they, we just want to keep cards in hand, card and credit. Again, just getting an ice wall here would be good enough. Stop it. No, I'm actually really happy that it reminds me that we always have that. But yeah, all our ice is really mid-range. So it's all about can we destroy the programs? Dirty laundry, that's a credit. That's good. As much as the axis doesn't really matter. It's more so just getting that can draw. Chesla coming down. Okay, we're going to see central runs. Uh, Stavka is the blowout, potentially. We have to figure out how to win on our remote server. We have a half run, which is kind of okay. Uh, it means that you have to rerun into the Enigma. Uh, so it's like a really weak, bad border control. Let's draw once. Okay. I, this becomes an ice wall as well. I think there's some instance that we just want to push in the remote server. Like we just want to get as much um, ice as we can. So we'll do this. We'll get an ice wall, put it on the remote server. And then from there, we can put the Zato in there. Uh, alternately, we can get the half run in front of it. I think that's fine too. We can also just play the government before we end up resing uh, what's going to be like seven credit, eight credits worth of ice, I guess. Uh, our guys hate it. Maybe we could have put the ice wall there, but again, Zato is kind of our win condition. Having the Enigma outside is also kind of nice because you can, I guess, losing the clicker and the runs, I did the same thing. Wake and plan, HQ pressure is going to be real. We got to get cards out of here. So we're going to do install and install advance. And there's a chance, again, Shu can take it. We haven't seen inside jobs, which is like the worst thing by a mile. Ghost tongue, losing a reprise. Ooh, I think we're lucky about that. Reprise is really cool. All right, I think we might lose this agenda. But I think we have to do something here. And I think we're going to see inside job. At least there's only two cards in hand. But you're assuming there's going to be inside jobs three of them in the list with Ghost Tongue. Um, the question is, how easily can this be dealt with? Now, the good thing about this remote server is like we can always send Zato the ice wall to get a spin doctor to like just shuffle the agenda away if we ever panic. So we're going to only fire the Zato once the Enigma's hit. Immediately, we're trashing our remote server. Not that it's a good remote server, but like it's an okay remote server. We also have to remember we can um, a virus into a half run here. Okay, so there's two clicks left after this. So I don't think we want to Zato the Ice Wall. We can Zato the Enigma. Then running back, this gets a two cost here, only if we want to. No, I think we, this is how expensive to break. Oh, literally free. So that's great. So I think we do that last. Then if we res them a virus, we can go get a two cost here to put that there. Um, it'll be a half run uh, to blank the Ice Wall. So that will be that. Then she has to run back. We can Zato this, then we can Zato this. And then we can trash the Cat's Cradle. And I think at that point, we're in a good spot. So ideally, if we can keep the Enigma around, it'll be good because it is a decoder. Oh, sorry. We're going to challenge the decoder. Uh, but I don't know if we have a virus here. We have to throw out an ice. We can throw out a half run to get a half run. That's a bounce. And then there's two clicks to go back. I think that's fine. I think that's the most taxing way to do this. I might be wrong. But that means that we can't get the spin doctor. Hmm. So yeah, that would be the half run. Runs back. We Zato the half run. Then we Zato that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do it. So reg, purge, get two, half run, server two. Uh, trash a card. Let's get rid of the half run. Choose installed card. Uh, you cannot use tremolo. We actually probably would have been right to let her pass the ice wall, but at that point, like it costs nothing, so it doesn't actually matter. All right, that's gonna end the run. So again, we have two nice Zato targets, and that means we'll get the Kimberlite field, which means we can trash uh the cat's cradle, which might be the last decoder, barring some recursion. Now there's a chance R and D gets run here. And with R&D getting run, if there's a reprise in hand, we're in a really bad spot. Reprise just undoes everything. Overclock on HQ, love it. Uh, unfortunately, we have no tricks against that. So this has got to be overclock into reprise for this to be a problem. Resing the ice wall. Ooh, she undid click. Oh, sick. All right. Going back in. Let's think about this. So I think we just Zato this, right? All right, we'll just Zato that. Now with one click left, again, Reprise is safe as much as uh, she can get into HQ. She can't get into this remote server. 
Uh, but she's going to force us to trash her stuff. So we're going to trash that. And now we can score this out. And we'll trash the cat's cradle. So then we can trash the ice wall. Admittedly, yeah, we could, we can res the ice wall. But that is going to be some program destruction. So we'll get down the cat's cradle, which we think is the last one. Oh, we have to choose our card to trash. I got excited. It has to be a resed card. Uh, annoying. This is Stavka, which isn't good enough. We don't have that many end the run code gates. That's a problem. Is it deck only has two end the run code gates? I think we should just put more enigmas and cut more anvils. Like, that's a bummer. Um, but we have to trash a resed thing. So I'll trash that. I guess we have to. Actually, wait, wait, wait. We'll trash that. That makes more sense. Install a two cost from your deck. That would be half run or regolith. Do we need a regolith here? Um, yeah, that's fine. Nope. Uh, we don't have any. Um, we'll go ahead and trash the cradle. So that might be it for code gates. Regolith, regolith, one in hand. Yeah, we don't have any regoliths. And we don't want to keep the half runs in there because we have a Mavirus in hand. So this could be a seven strength Stavka. What is the math? It is two, four, five, six. And with the Chesva, can't really stop that. Um, so I think we let this go through. Admittedly, if we had the Mavirus, we could do this, but we need the Mavirus next turn. Yeah, we're going to let this go through. This is two credits it's with the Chesva. Actually, if we res this, she might not be able to get an access because I think she needs two for this. Yeah, oh no, it would be down to zero. There's a lot of agenda still in R&D. Like we've only seen one agenda so far, but I think she's out of code gates. Unfortunately, the list, like, I think we just need to play more end the run code gates as taxing and as annoying as Anvil is. Like if we're trying to lock out, but now if we get them a virus behind the Enigma, it's only weak to um, pinhole threading. Okay. So she knows we have a Stavka. So if we do Stavka on the remote server, we can put in the Atlas. I do think we just need the regolith money though. So we need to protect this. We haven't seen a pinhole yet. She threw out, oh, super cool, Tread Lightly and Panweave, which makes, may, might make sense as if she can't get into HQ anymore. So the question is, where do we put the Mavirus? Because um, we want to be safe. It's weak to pinhole wherever it is. So whether we put it on the remote server and hide it behind the regolith, I think that's what we do. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we do. So I'm going to put this down first and this down first. Generally, I put the upgrade down first. So you kind of want to be a bit tricksy. Stavka means that we can have Mavirus. Ice Wall is fine. This is fine. If anything, we need to get the ice wall here on server two uh, because it plays around inside job. And we need to make sure this is not on the outermost so she can't inside job in. All right, this is going to blow up the rig. So we're going to res the Stavka. We don't have to make a massive strength. No, but we'll res them a virus. Instant speed. Go get a half run. Put it up on R&D. Uh, trash a card. I guess we have to. Can't use Carmen, so we're going to trash two more breakers. Whoa. Yeah, that's 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 a hard one. She was calling GG there. That is going to break two breakers again. There might be another tremolo, but that's the last Carmen. So these subroutines are going to be well, and that's just going to be a game. <laughs> oh, breaker. Hey, good game. Yeah, again, it's going to be kind of the idea is that this deck is so much weaker to endurance for obvious reasons. And I feel like that's kind of the problem. It's like the best thing to do in the format. And then decks like this are very alive and well, and it's really hard to interact with them. And not impossible, but very hard. You're generally going to need like two killers or install multiple programs at the same type. And that's obviously not efficient and redundant and ugly as opposed to just playing endurance. So, but anyways, we trash two breakers. That's the last Carmen. There'll be one more tremolo, but she's in a bad spot. This deck needs boomerang or recursion or something. Yeah, recursion's tricky. Well, that's a deck. Again, avoid endurance at all costs. I do think you can do some stuff to make that a bit better, whether you need to add the tag package and retribution. Uh, it, this is a really, really strong uh, and you have really unfair tricks that are just hard to interact with as long as people are playing normal breakers. So, yeah, uh, I want to encourage people to do that. Yet I'm out here doing that. Thanks for watching. And in this video, Andre finally gets salty about endurance and startup. It's really rough, right? Like, obviously endurance is really good. I feel like certain factions, or like every faction can do it, uh, but I feel like stuff like this kind of encourages it. So maybe I'm becoming part of the problem. Maybe that means we'll get to a solution we all like sooner than later, but uh, I don't know how to feel about it. I didn't think it would be this uh, polarizing, at least our endurance versus non-endurance matchups. You can still do it. I think it's still fun. And uh, this combo is really cool. And I think there's a lot more you can do with this. There's always flexibility and surprise you can build into op decks. And um, that makes me always want to come back. Huge shout out again to all our patrons that help support me and the channel, giving me the time to get the gameplay capture together, do the editing. It takes a lot of time. Again, it's greatly appreciated. Of course, we'll be back. We got streams, hopefully a video next week. Uh, standard ban list update just came out. We got some pretty big bans into standard format and it's looking pretty interesting out there. I think a lot of the pain points were addressed. Who knows if that's going to happen for startup, but um, yeah, maybe we'll do some standard format coming up. Who knows? Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the recommended content. Take care.